I got record. nice ass hips, man. I can fucking these things roll like Poseidon. Are you ready for this? edition of KFC Radio on the Barstool Sports Network. Big episode today. We got our guy our back in the Our fucking guy. Glenn Howerton is e back. E e e e <laughs> what was that? I sincerely hope that was not a sign of things to come in this episode <laughs> or else we're going to go off the walls. Did you just do a squeaking bed noise for I Glenn? So. Are we e e e are we fucking him? I don't know if it was a I bird. I didn't know if that was a bed or a bird or a dolphin. It's a little bit of everything. Like a, like a baby sea lion? It's a it's a dolphin riding atop the ocean with a bed on its back with a bird and, and two dodos of... fucking on it. That's our interview with Glenn Howerton. <laughs> That's what you're going to hear today on a powerhouse episode of KFC Radio. We got Am I the Asshole. We got our voicemails. We're going to talk. We're going to chop it up. And then uh, Glenn to, to wrap things up. So... It's a dolphin with a bed and Dodo's fucking listen to KFC radio, motherfuckers. It's brought to you by Owens Mixers. Now, maybe though, maybe that 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 dolphin and that Dodo are, are drinking a transfusion, getting a little loose up there, and that's why they're here. That's you know? that's usually happens when I drink transfusions, right? You, you, you loosen up. The Owens Mixers are good because you know. Uh, it goes down easy because you mix it with some mint cucumber lime or you mix it with the grape and ginger ale transfusion mix. These mixers make every alcoholic beverage a little more enjoyable, a little smoother, a little easier to drink. Next thing you know, you loosen up, get a little lubricated, and then it's ar -ee, ar -ee, ar -ee, <laughs> with a couple dodos on top of a bed on a dolphin. <laughs> So, if that you want to do that... That is just a <laughs> celestial fuck. <laughs> that is otherworldly. <laughs> oh, I love it. Just add vodka to any of these uh, drinks, or, I don't know, gin, if you're into the Ryan Reynolds shit. Uh, Gin's you're... having a moment. It really is, according to John. He's the only one saying that, but okay. I'm I not agree. the only one saying I agree. It. Gin, dude, I've been, I've been, I've been fucking with some gin lately. Have you? Yeah, in I what, like a gin. What, 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 what's the mixer? Uh, I, I like a, I got, I like, I like a cocktail bar. I'll get like, they'll, they'll, no, they'll, but they'll like, okay, what, gin, what, what like kind a, of cocktail? Like a you? gin mute, 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 uh, gin mule, mint, mint, gin Moscow mule. Boy, was that tough. Mint cucumbers, what I was trying to say. Oh, they got that perfect. Uh, they gin, got that exact mint mix. cucumber. Uh, there's like, uh, it's just it's refreshing. It's got a, it's got that it's like not, flowery taste not, to no, it. No, what does that mean, dude? I drank one the other day that had flowery straight up flower really petals in it, like a lot of them. It was delicioso. Is that a bar called fucking, Il Florista? I fucking hate you. <laughs> I fucking hate you and gin and whoever made that with flowers in the mix. It's got a flowery taste. Just just kill yourself. Put your head in the oven. <laughs> Owen's transfusion mix is the. How is, long would that take? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's available online at the Owens site or on the Barstool store, or you can get it at a liquor store near you if they carry it. Uh, whether you're making transfusions or margaritas or dark and stormies or any of the classic mixed drinks, or if you're just making your own concoction, Owens Mixers is the uh, the best mixers on the planet. Uh, so go check it out. Owens, the Barstool store, or your local liquor store. I think it would take... Does your head melt? What I don't know if it's, if it's like gas or heat. You know? I think it's the heat. I, th I bet you you like breathe in gas and you either pass out and then you'd burn to death. Boy, what a tough way to go. Not a great one. Why would you opt for that? I one? don't know if that's actually like a like. Has anybody ever killed themselves that way? Because that seems like if you're in the kitchen, you might as well grab a knife or like you know. There's other ways. Yeah, Harry you know? Carey or something. Yeah, yeah. Harry Carey is that it? Well, that's the Cubs announcer, but it does sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's something similar, though. I don't think Harry Carey. It's, it's like it's, Hakuri. It's, yeah, well, it's Seppuku is the other one. That's the one. But there's also, like, <laughs> it's like Hari Kari. It's like, it is similar to that. I think it's pronounced a little different than Harry Carey. Okay. Harry Carey's I was looking for Seppuku. Yeah. I was Boom. close. That also not a great way to go, though. Stab yourself in the stomach. And then get it together to rip your fucking entrails open. I think that's the point is that you're, you know, you disgrace your family. So you have to, like, you know, really, go, you're not going to go out peacefully. But boy, I'll tell you what, I do not love my family enough. Too big. If I disgrace you, I have disgraced you. I didn't fucking rip my entrails out. Yeah, Sorry. I'm, I'm, we've all disgraced our families. We still got our entrails. My, we still got our intestines. They're in a mess, if we're being honest. Yep. They're still they probably should be ripped out, yeah. but yeah. There's a lot of news right now in the... In the, There's a lot of news in the news. There is a lot of news in the yeah, news. Yeah, tons of news in the news. It's it's That could be 2020 slogan. There's a lot of news in the news. <laughs> that, that actually really does make sense for 2020. But a lot of news that's making me just like... 
just there's you know the other half lives in in a manner with money and fame and fortune that is just staggering and uh first i'll start off with dr dre dr dre is going through a nasty divorce and the numbers that are coming out like i said make you realize that the other half lives in such a manner that you can't even like begin to comprehend you can't even i don't want to no i have no interest in comprehending these numbers no it is it is, I mean, I'll just read it to you right here. So she wants $2 million a month. I'll be, that's, that's rude. That's putting mm. too much on her. What she wants is $1,936,399 per month. <laughs> Which, by the way, probably does seem bizarre to people, but this, a lot of this shit is like formula-based, and like you plug in numbers and a number comes. It's not like she picked that number. But, yeah, $2 million a month. Laundry and cleaning, ten grand a month. Mm-hmm. Seems too much. Probably Clothing. does. One hundred and thirty-five thousand well, dollars. See now per that month. now that laundry's adding up. If you have one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars <laughs> worth of clothes, then you have ten thousand dollars worth of laundry. Education, uh, as I understand it, they have two adult children, <laughs> like in their late twenties. Okay. I don't know what education they're getting. I don't uh-huh. know if they're Buster Bluth, and it's just like <laughs> we're working towards another fucking uh, dis- degree now. <laughs> like could be what, her sixty thousand dollars a month. A month. What he like. You could go to George Washington, which I believe is the most expensive college in the country. That's sixty grand a year. Yeah, there's no maybe a seventy grand. Well, a year, maybe but. if like two children and her are doing I'm gonna like find continuing out education, and they all have uh, you know twenty thousand dollar. No, no, no. It's no. impossible. Like no matter what, it's not per month. Maybe per year can all add up, but not per month. I, this, uh, his Wikipedia doesn't list his children's age. He has six. I don't know if it's yeah, all but he's with, probably got with a, yeah, Nicole. a bunch of different. Um, but whatever the point is, I, I believe that they have two adult children. I, I read that at one point. They have two adult children, children together. I don't know how you could possibly spend sixty thousand dollars per month on two adult children going to college. But uh, how about this, by the way? I it's hard to spend sixty thousand dollars a month on anything, <laughs> on anybody for anything. It's hard, certainly for education. Keep you going. know what's even harder? Spending nine hundred thousand dollars per month. Per, I'm, I'm checking this again just to make sure I'm right. Yeah, nine hundred thousand dollars per month on entertainment. I that I actually find easier to be than education. If you want to entertain, the sky's the limit. You know what I mean? You can do. Can you? I mean. Personally, I don't think I could. Let's say I give you nine hundred grand. I, I got yeah, this is right some here. Brewster's here's, Millions here's, type here's shit. Here's nine hundred grand right now to spend. You it have month. until October to spend it. What do you do? All right, so let's say thirty days. So that would and be, let's say it's non-COVID, so you right, can do right. whatever. Okay, so that that comes out to what three thirty thousand dollars a day would sure. be. We know John's not <laughs> the, the sharpest with math. If you watch Lower in the Bar, right, Nick? That'd be thirty thousand times thirty. Uh, th- thirty thousand times thirty yeah. would be nine hundred thousand. Thirty k a day. To entertain. I mean, listen, I went... Netflix, 11 bucks a month? No, but like... And that's, <laughs> that's, that's, so how do I get to the other uh, $899,989? <laughs> but, you know, I went... Uh, when I did my ba- my brother's bachelor party in Vegas, uh, I was the best man, and at the time I thought I was some sort of baller, and I think it was like ten k at, at the club for a night. So that's... You spent ten grand at the club for one night? You're not going out the next night. Again, it, it can be done. It's it's uh, also eight hundred thousand dollars is going to cocaine. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. So the other hundred thousand drugs <laughs> and sex and private jets to get to and from where you want to go. That's what PJs. You got to hit PJs. Hard. PJ, yo, and like, that, that's where a lot of this everybody's downfall is the private jets. So if you want to really talk about how you can do some Brewster's Million shit and have money with nothing to show for it at the end, it's the private jets. Scott Storch. Blew a hundred million dollars because he said he flew private everywhere, and he was like, "I lived like a billionaire when I was only like a hundred millionaire," and that'll do it. Chrissy Teigen was tweeting about you know Chrissy Teigen and John Legend. They are fucking rich, yeah. and they and she was like, "I can't fly private everywhere." Not you know so, sometimes definitely, but not everywhere. So private jets can can definitely get you. Somehow it doesn't get Portnoy. <laughs> um, Thirty thousand dollars a day on enter fuckingtainment. Like even if you got a suite at a a game every night. No, yeah, get, those kind of things. That's like chump. Change, that's that's you know? like maybe ten grand. Yeah, you're you're, you're gonna you're approach taking a suite to take twenty people to the game every night. Maybe you're spending ten grand. Nah, yeah. probably more than that. I don't know what a suite costs. I don't think so. I mean, 
you know, maybe certain games, certain places, but I don't think it's crazy like that. Again, maybe if you stock the suite with Louis, the, you know, 1492 and all this shit that's like super expensive. But it is, this is what I mean, where it's like, I can't even begin to understand how the other half lives. Where like, it's like, even if I want to, I can't. would be like shopping for me. And yeah. I don't need to spend my entertainment on shopping because yeah. I already have $150,000 for shopping. <laughs> <laughs> what would you, what do you think your Monthly. By the way, this bill. is monthly. Yeah. You gave me 150 k and 900 k yeah. for a year. I don't know if oh, I'd be good. able to spend it. Right. What do you think you spend on entertainment right now? You, know, you, uh, you go to the bar every night. It's probably 100 bucks a night at the bar. All right. So that's, let's call it 30-day months. So you're spending uh, three grand. Oh, boy. Uh, I wish we didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Is that that's the right math? I go to the bar every night in COVID. I don't go to the bar every night. I go to the bar every night just right now because I have an air mattress at home and no cable oh, set up. Oh, yeah. So. It's, it's going to stop when COVID goes away, John. <laughs> that John, I mean, John walks home every day, and he's, he's walking the streets, and he goes, I'm going to go to the bar because of COVID. I have nothing at home. There's just yeah. nothing in my apartment. It's but a that, barren apartment. But you, you, when you do... Actually, I don't know. Now that you now that you're moving in with someone, you know, when you it was like, can I should I go home to Lou and Gaz or should I go to the bar? Right. You know, you got somebody to go home to now. It, it probably will change, but also more likely is that she's just gonna go to the bar with you, and then you go home. You go home after that, probably. So, uh, bar every night, Netflix. Let's say all the streaming added up, you know, is like fifty bucks or some shit, right? You do like five or four or five of them. Yeah, five fifty bucks. Do you month. are you do you pay for yours? I'm a freeloader. No, I pay. I pay yeah. for all of them. I have, I'm a freeloader, uh, and not because of any other reason other than laziness. It's like I have a couple of people that see, I see. I'm a, and, I'm not a freeloader for no other reason other than laziness, because I don't feel like tracking someone down and asking them for whatever. Yeah, I, once, laziness and and so had, aversion. Ha, had you have had you had those I'm passwords in AA already at all times? Awkward aversion. I like that. Did you make that up right now? Yeah, I did. Awkward aversion. <laughs> um, uh, AA. Find your AA sponsor. You're my sponsor. <laughs> like, so John, I, I, I need your help. I'm about to have an awkward uh, awkward conversation. Tell me how to avert it. <laughs> I'd rather spend like 600 bucks a year and not have to have yeah. that one conversation where it's like, hey, could I get your Hulu password? I, I, have, I don't have all of them, but I have Hulu, Amazon, Netflix, Prime, HBO, Showtime. Disney Plus? Disney Plus, yeah. ESPN Plus, which, Ugh. by the way, is fucking insane that I can't watch ESPN games on ESPN Plus. ESPN I've, Plus. Yeah, I mean, you obviously did it for the pay-per-views, right? I did. I've done it. So I paid. It's like, what? what is it a month? I don't know what it is a month, but it's I've paid. It's not cheap, though, right? It's not that cheap. Yeah. And I paid it every month from the Tyson Fury fight. Yep. Until that's when I started, too. The Celtics game last week. I hadn't used it since the Fury fight. You had to pay for the Celtics? Oh, that's what you're saying. And I, I, was yeah. like, I was like, oh, it's on ESPN. I'll just watch it on ESPN Plus because I don't have a TV set up. I just watch my laptop in my apartment. And I get there. It's like, it's like, you want to watch Venus at the U.S. Open? I was like, fucking no. no. Want to watch what's on ESPN? Not that, ESPN, too. I mean, you know, we are big time. We've, we were on the record many times saying, like, just pay for these things. Uh, but ESPN Plus is pushing the boundary for me of, like, you sign up, and then you have to pay the money anyway for the pay per view, and it's like, what? This is just a racket. It's an absolute racket, uh, and, and, uh, and and you, you don't can't get watch anything. what's on ESPN, right? Not only are you not getting the basics, but like they don't deliver anything like special or extra with it at no, all. It's not know? like the athletic. The athletic I actually find interesting articles on, yeah, and maybe because I follow the athletic, and I don't follow ESPN Plus, maybe they tweet more interesting yes, articles if I followed them. Be. But the but like, uh, who, you know, I know some of the athletic writers, like there's some names on there. Yeah. And people, I can't even tell you, like, who from ESPN these days are you really like? Scott Van Pelt's like, like the only guy. I got to read their take on this. Yeah, like, no. you know, it used I like to kind Bamani of be a still, thing. Bamani still just makes me think in ways I'd never think before. Yeah. But I don't really read his articles often. And you get him on social, it. you know? I just get him on social. Yeah. yeah. There's just, they just don't have the, the, the roster they once did. Um, so, anyway, back to the, the bigger picture here. The point is, you know, between watching TV and going to a bar. And again, even if it wasn't COVID, you know, it's not like John would be club hopping. You wouldn't, Fuck be, no, wouldn't be popping on, like hopping on it's helicopters. Sad boy season. And, yeah. You'll be fucking club hopping? No. No. Catch me at Molly's on third. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Warm in the microwave back, whiskey. Eating a shepherd's pie by the mm. fire. That's that's what you can catch. Just farting. <laughs> just farting out shepherd's pie with warm whiskey by the fire. There's just like little bursts of flame. <laughs> what's going? What's happening out there? John's John's here. Um, by the way, last night I popped. I went to the bar before uh, I went home. Just grabbed a quick burger and fries. And there was this couple next to me and my buddy. They were playing backgammon. Oh, I've been backgammon has been introduced in my life very recently. Really? Yes. Don't know how to play. Don't know how to play really. Also, does not seem like. I mean. 
I don't really give a shit about any of this stuff anymore, but like in terms of coronavirus, I'm just watching their grubby paws all over each other's little circles and and which was a weird enough move. I when I sat down, um six six pence none the richer was playing. Uh Kiss Me. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew the name, were, I couldn't put what song was, but and yes. they were playing backgammon together. And I was like, This that is awesome. Like this is a very romantic couple. Yeah. And then they wrapped up and I don't know who they wa- who they were. Uh, or if they're uh, owners of the bars or whatever, but they got the royal treatment and they were allowed to go in and sit at the bar, which was like a flex. Like I went to go to the bathroom and they were just sitting in the corner of the bar watching. It might have just been a TV thing because there was one TV outside like we talked yesterday. There's no, not yeah. enough. And then uh, but they were allowed to sit at the bar and I was like, ooh, you lucky bastards. I just want to sit at a bar. Yeah. So outdoor seats are great, but I, sometimes I want to belly Massachusetts does up. it right because Massachusetts, you're allowed in. Oh, yeah? And what they do is they put... The separated. the tables at the bar, so you can't technically sit at the bar, but the tables are like, like, uh, flush against the bar. So okay. it's like a table for two. So like we're so your sitting, bar's on the side. Like yes, you're... and then the bartender just serves you like that. Yeah, okay, that that would get it's, the trick. Done. It's a nice little twist. I just want to be back at the bar, mm-hmm. like the 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 liquor bottles behind you, in front of you, and the TV's up there. Just that's home, you know. Um, so anyway, we're, we're not done. No, yeah, keep going. This one's the big one, I think. There's something worse than the entertainment bill? Charitable contributions. Oh, yeah. $125,000 a month. You don't get to make charitable contributions with other Other people's money. money. (laughs) It's not charity. That's that's, that's just giving away Dre's money. That's not like... You are already the charitable contribution. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) This whole thing is $2 million of charity that Dr. Dre gives to you. Like, but, I need I mean, 125k of your money to give away to other people. Yeah, fuck all the way off. That is crazy. Fuck all the if way I, off. If my divorce money was just going to other people, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna write you a check. You can donate it, but that's gotta be that's coming out of your fucking pocket. Hundred thousand wow. dollars to make a wish foundation from Nicole Young. I'm like, getting fucking credit for that. that. That's from Dr. Dre. Yeah, that's not from Nicole Young. Wow. By the that way, is worse. You're right. Speaking of make a wish foundation, did you know that those kids aren't sick anymore? What does that mean? These make a wish foundations. And again, like everything on this podcast, don't quote me on it. Uh, they're once they're healthy, they go on make a wish. I thought it was like before they die, they go. So did I. It's once you're healthy, because which I guess kind of makes sense. Like you can't take a fucking well, right. kid who's, who's like on his deathbed, on his deathbed or, or to God Disney, forbid, contagious or something. Right. So I, I, I'm so you ninety nine percent sure. You make sure. your wish, and then they're like, if you don't die, yeah. you can go to Disney. Next you better year. today. Today's a don't die day for you, pal. How many? And so is tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and maybe in two years you can go meet Pluto. How many people? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but the fact that you picked Pluto, like <laughs> not Mickey or whatever. How many people? Boy, how many people do you think make a wish and don't, and they don't get, get it, it done? A lot. That is a. Uh, I venture Nick, to guess most. Write this down. That's another like episode of the inevitable show that we do. Like the Make a Wish kid who dies before he <laughs> can go meet Pluto. Like, like 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 Chappelle shows up every day, like just teasing the kid, be like, "I'll fucking play with you once you get better." <laughs> Yo, that that skit is one of his all times. You better pick up them sticks, Timmy. <laughs> oh man, that is a dark thought. So we got to cover the uh-huh. Disney gangs and the Make a Wish deaths. So all in two million dollars. The bulk of it that's making the headlines is the nine hundred thousand dollar entertainment slush fund, but the hundred and twenty five k charity loophole. Charity is the all time loophole. Like, how many people would you say donate to charity? Actually, out of charity, and oh. not as not out of a a uh, a front uh, a uh, you know. Uh, to look good, like a reputation thing, or be just a, uh, like a ta- like my uh, my accountant every year. He's like uh, charitable loop, uh, charitable donations. Um, what do you say, like uh, like five k this year? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> I, I don't know. It depends on how many times I went to Whole Foods when they were doing the you want to add a dollar. <laughs> did I go? Did I go to Whole Foods five thousand times this year? Then how, yeah. How many times was it at CVS when they're like, would you like to add a dollar to put food on a kid's plate? I'm like, uh, AA, like, a- uh, like I got a little fucking aversion here. So, what was it? Awkwardness aversion? Awkwardness aversion. I got a little awkwardness aversion. So, yeah, I guess take this dollar. I like also, that. by the way, when they ask you that shit at Whole Foods, I'm like, why don't you have Bezos pay it? Yeah. What are you fucking asking me for, man? I just bought a $17 steak that I still have to cook myself. What are you talking about? Do I want to fucking give a dollar? No, have Bezos do it. Motherfuckers worth $200 billion. Stop asking me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I I, I, <laughs> I think I it, just had to call and plead my bank to extend my credit. Don't <laughs> fucking ask me for a dollar. 
Do you ever click the ones that it, when it just is like you know as simple as like click it there? Like, do you do that? Is that what is that how old would no, it? No, someone has to verbally ask me. Yeah, <laughs> I have to say no to your face. <laughs> I'll say no to a robot. I'll fucking die. Yeah, I don't even you know I don't even consider that shit. Uh, Cause I know it's not doing anything. No, I know it's not fucking going anything. I know it's going to someone's pockets. Definitely, someone along the lines going lining right their pockets. Yep. So, also a hundred thousand dollar mortgage. I don't know what that means to be honest. She. I don't. I don't. I don't know anything about mortgages. Someone at some point in my life should have taught me. Consider it your rent. Consider it your rent. Your rent. Okay, hundred k a month on rent. That's good. That's a nice place. At least that's a. uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's a very lavish fucking mortgage and a big house and all that shit. But it's okay. There's something tangible there, you know, as a, as opposed to these other things that are just like. I'd be like, you want a hundred thousand dollar mortgage? Ether. You should have invented Beats by Dre. Yeah. Well, so that's <laughs> what this all comes down to. I, I don't think. I think people probably know now, and especially if they're going to read into these headlines. But there was a long time where people thought of Dr. Dre as a rapper and a producer, and then they even knew like the Beats by Dre thing. But people didn't understand the extent of. They thought it was headphones, and really what it was is that he also came up with an iTunes-esque type of platform where you can buy music for, like, 99 cents and, and stream music, and they wanted, they bought that shit to just, like, get rid of the competitor, mm. you know? So that's, Dr. Drake got a billion off that shit. Some Jimmy Iovine. If you haven't seen the D, the, what's it called? The, uh, something with a D. Uh, the I'm gonna look it up real quick. Domin it's like the Dominators, but it's a better word than that. So, um, the uh, yeah, watch that documentary though. It's 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 uh, Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre, the Defiant ones. Yeah, wow, I was never gonna land on that one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they you know they they're like the most like influential people out there. I um, also love that one of my favorite parts of the whole story is Tyrese. Tyrese, broke it. Ugh. Ty Tyrese, Tyrese almost on, almost like ruined it. ruined it. Yeah. Could you imagine if so? Again, if you don't know, Dr. Dre. Uh, Apple bought him out for a billion dollars, and Tyrese got like you know heard about it through the grapevine because he's buddies with him, and like tweeted about it. No, he's like, on IG, he's on like IG live. Yeah, or and I, and they almost pulled IG the stories. plug on the whole fucking operation because it leaked early. If if someone ever costs you a billion, and the fact that it's Tyrese, you know, if like if Eminem cost him a billion, I don't know. It's like well. We'll figure it out. If Tyrese Gibson costs you a billion, you, like, chop his head off. Dude. You kill that guy. Yeah, right. And then Vin Diesel kills you because you don't mess <laughs> with family. <laughs> uh, so Dre is worth more than you probably ever realized. And now his wife's going to be worth more than you ever realized. And, I mean, until you go through divorce stuff, you, you just don't understand how much money really can be at stake. What's crazy is... People don't get the difference, too, between, like, alimony and, like, child support and stuff like that. Like, everybody always is busting my balls thinking that I'm paying alimony. I'm not paying alimony. Alimony, you have to be married for a long time, and you ha and the and your partner has to make, like, no money themselves. I didn't Al know this. So alimony makes more sense when, traditionally speaking, it was always, it was always like, the wife would, you'd get married, and you'd have kids, and the wife would be like, I'm going to stay home with the kids, and you go to work. Mm -hmm. So... Traditionally, the wife and the mother would basically give up their career. And so then say, you know, 30 years later, you get a divorce. And it's like, well, I have no resume. Mm -hmm. I have no experience. I didn't get education. I don't know how technology in the world works anymore. Like, I'm like unemployable almost. Right. And I did that in theory for you and the family. So you got to like make up, the, you know, that all makes sense. Yeah. But when you've been married, like in my case, we were married for a few years and she has her own career. It's like. No, you, I have to take care of my kids, but like she can provide for herself and she has her own career. Yeah, I didn't know this. Yeah. So and and uh, but but, you know, within that structure, people like take advantage of it and obviously are just pushing the limits to get as much money as they can. Very few people, I think, in divorce are just like, no, 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 I, I make my own money. And mm -hmm. like we weren't, you know, I didn't give up anything for you. So it's OK. It's like it's like my my accountant with taxes is like, if we can push this envelope, we're going to. Uh, so. And, and like I said before, I know these numbers are staggering, but a lot of it is a formula. And it's like, if you make, if you're worth a billion, and, you know, when I plug in my salary to these formulas, it turned out, you know, several thousand dollars. When Dr. Dre does it, it turns out a few million. <laughs> so it, it's it's one of those things that's like, it is a, a staggering number, but I think it's all relative, you know? But where you run into trouble is like the you just it's just uh, impossible to justify. Yes. You can't right. I mean, like, it's like it's within the rules, it's it sounds like, but 
if we're being realistic, it's just not fair or real or reasonable. Or like, you do you have a it. harem of eighteen-year-old boys that you then then you can't spend nine hundred thousand dollars a month unless you are taking them to fucking arcade games and fucking be like, all right, here's a quarter, here's a quarter. Then there's no way you're spending nine hundred thousand dollars per month on entertainment. You gotta fly them to fucking Topeka where they got great fucking uh, adventure parks and fucking shit. That that should run you up. Fast passes are expensive quick. as hell. Fast passes. I mean, you go to some of these tourist attractions where it's you know like thirty bucks for a fucking bottle of water and 75 bucks for a t-shirt and yeah you, you, go, you, you, you take it a bunch of little kids to disney all the time yeah you gotta walk out of a fucking uh every every ride you go on you walk out you gotta go through a fucking uh a gift shop and they're gonna throw a hissy fit every time yep. yeah yeah so of money you know what there. that's the answer by the way you asked me like how could i how would i spend 900 grand in entertainment i'd take my kids to disney yeah <laughs> take a couple two-year-olds to disney and you're fucking going broke dude it's disney crazy Disney's oh, yeah. absolutely insane. I mean, it, that's I, I've gone stealing. as recently as a year ago. It's insanity. You, you know, it's just like we are we are going to charge whatever we want, and you're going to fucking pay for it because you're already here and you're trapped, and you either are a weirdo adult who's like has an addiction to this shit, or you're with your kids who are going to cry until you get it for them, and you'll pay any amount of money. My dad refused to ever go back to Disney. After that because one, of that? One year. Yeah. He's, like, he's like, every fucking ride they tried to get me for money. Yeah. Every oh, fucking how about when they, ride. Like, they take a picture of you going through like down the, the drop. and it's 40 like, bucks. Yeah. For a picture, like a blurry picture in a card of you going, like, yeah, forty fucking bones. Uh, it's um, it's wouldn't it be funny if she was just like, yeah, I have a harem of eighteen year olds. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of? Uh, your buddy we we were hanging out with a couple weeks ago, who uh, had uh, was very generous with his corporate account, his <laughs> corporate spending account, and kind of got like audited and needed to try to justify it. And it's like it, it would be interesting to see her try to justify all this. Be like, okay, I'm gonna itemize this 900k a month. Spend on this. Spend on that. Da da da. da. Uh, because these lawyers are shysters, man. That same I mean, buddy, by the way, got fired by his accountant. <laughs> that one of the all time stories we were at was. I I don't think I've ever left this hard. We, I was super high, but it was still was. <laughs> we were so at, fucking fun. We were at brunch one day, drunk. The weekend before, he'd flown to Vegas and emptied his 401k. Wait, hang, to on, go. hang on, hang uh, on. The Feidelberg's buddy getting fired by his accountant story. It's one of the best stories of all time. It's brought to you by BarkBox. Is, uh, I said that if you don't get BarkBox, you're, I said this on mail time. If you don't get BarkBox for your dog, you don't love your dog. And if you don't love your dog in 2020 America, you could be, you could be canceled. You could be like run out of town by the cancel mob. If people find out you're not a dog, you don't treat dogs right, they might kill you. Yeah. They might show like up. pictures of them on the internet or something like that. <laughs> Super chewer is the subscription box for dogs brought to you by BarkBox, where you get tough toys and meaty treats. That sounds like the description of a gay club. <laughs> Come on, Bobby, got tough toys and meaty treats. Whether you're a bear or a twink, they're going to have some fun under the rainbow tonight. But when you get these Super Chewer boxes, it comes with two durable toys, which are always fluff-free, which is clutch. Like, Duncan rips apart any toy that you can get through like instantly, but these are made of like, it's like it's fabric, so they get the chew on, but they don't rip it open and eat the fluff and all that stuff. They also have ones that are rubber, uh, rubber and nylon, so you just can't get through it. You get two full bags of allergy friendly treats and two meaty, all natural chews, which are like bully sticks or like one. Duncan's latest box had what looked like a Slim Jim, <laughs> and I was I, I was hungry and I was like, <laughs> mm, you want you want to have had the ice cream before? I've had dog ice cream. Yeah, I mean that's just like, ice cream. Like a hoodie cup. It's like a little bit just dairy free or whatever. Yeah, but stuff. I was like, listen, there's two of these. You let's go half on it. You get one, I get one, Duncan. <laughs> no big deal. Um, and the best part, as always, the dogs know they can smell what it is. They know it's for them, and they go nuts. It's like your Santa Claus delivering them. Dude, a, Maddie's a presents. just like start going nuts on the box. Yeah, She's right, like, right. Uh, sometimes I think they just want the cardboard box too. <laughs> uh, for a limited time, you can get the uh, you can go to superchewer.com. And I just I got a bone to pick with the bark box. They're doing the 420 theme. It's September. I mean, it's always nice to have 420 stuff. That's sure. Weed is now year round, but don't tell me it's the 420 box when it's 920. You know, it's, it's not. It's not four. It it's nine. It doesn't make it. It's, it's September, not April. Off but 420. There. It plays all all year round. So go to superchewer.com/kfc. Get a free weed themed toy in your first box when you sign up. So just a little extra something for your doggy. That's superchewer.com slash KFC. I don't think anyone's ever been fired by their accountant in the history of the world. I didn't know it could happen. Because it's just like, I just take a percentage of your money. Like, I don't fucking care what you do with right. it. I get a percentage yeah, of it. Yeah, it, like, it. he was so reckless with his spending, as you'll hear in a second, that it, like, offended him as a financial, <laughs> you know, advisor of sorts. Like, But it really isn't a financial advisor. It's just like... 
It's like, I just tell you the numbers, yeah. you know? But he was so reckless that it was like, I can't be a party to this. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, like, I re like, like resigning from the White House. Like, look, like, what you guys are doing, I guess, don't... On right. a fundamental principle I, I, level, I don't agree with anymore, and I can't, I can't be, I can't be associated with. Um, I'm a man of principles, and you <laughs> violate like what I believe in. At the end of the day, <laughs> the weekend before he had emptied his 401k, which and you're what like 24 at this point? Uh, I'll say 26, but okay. yeah, yep. like we were pretty, we were pretty youngish, mm -hmm. and he emptied his 401k to go to Vegas with some friends, paid for all his friends too. Paid for like a suite, paid for like tables. I mean, he had 401k money. Why not? Yeah. Right. And so he's telling us a story at brunch a week later. And he's like, Yeah, I've been going back and forth with my accountant all week. Like, he's fucking pissed at me. Like, he's like telling me he's thinking about like a career change. Like, I, I've put so much undue stress <laughs> upon this man that, like, <laughs> that like, sounds like, <laughs> like, like a detective, you know, who, like, I've seen one too many murders and I can't do it anymore. And and so we're sitting there, and at this point we're like pretty good and drunk. Like my dad's at the table with us, my uncle. Yeah. Like we had a, we got a table of like we're being the loud obnoxious people at brunch. Yeah. So we're like, it's and he, like this guy he's a storyteller. He's got the <laughs> gift of gab. He's letting it. He's ripping. There's probably twelve of us there being loud. Like everyone's paying attention, and he's telling the story. He's like standing up, and like you hear a ding, and he gets an email like Saturday morning at like wow well, Saturday afternoon. Let's say it's yeah. one p.m. on a Saturday yeah. afternoon, and he just starts losing it. Like, and we're like, what, what, what? He goes, I got an email from the accountant. It just says, I fire you from being my client. And that was the whole sentence. No signature, no like dear blank, no like, like, like a sign off. It was just like, I regret up. to inform you. Just I, I fi almost like Tyler's quitting. Like I've decided to resign from my post of Arsenal Sports, period. <laughs> That's done. It. I fire you from being my client. Period. I'm done dealing with I mean, your fucking that ass. That just, like, you don't get fired from, <laughs> it's, it's just not even a thing. But what was even funnier was when he explained the story of when he was on the phone with the bank to tap into his 401k. And the guy he was speaking to, who would have, like, collected a commission and all this shit on the action, was like, Bro, are you sure you want to do this? This is pretty <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> and he delivered what I believe to be right up there with Scottie Pippen during the last dance of I'm not going to fuck up my summer. <laughs> one of the greatest quotes of all time. Because, again, he's 26. He's clearing out his bank account, uh, his 401k, which is probably a nice chunk of money, but not that much because your 401k is supposed to acc accrue until you're like 70. Right. And uh, you're, he's going to go through all these penalties and fees to do it. And also to go on a trip. That is not that expensive. <laughs> you can go to Vegas for like, you know, 700 bucks and like kind of figure it out as you go. And he said to him, and as the guy's like, really, I don't think you want to do this. And he goes, something to the effect of, if this moment right here, me clearing out this 401k defines my life, well, then I had a pretty shitty life. <laughs> Well, then I'm going to end up having a pretty <laughs> shitty life, so I don't fucking care. So, <laughs> so run me my money. <laughs> yeah, just, I'm just asking you for my money. I didn't ask for a lecture. Just give me my fucking money that I shouldn't be touching, but I want to touch it. If this defines yeah. my life. I had a pretty shitty life. It's a, it's, that is a, a great line. When you think of it, it's either like, either I'm going to bounce, like either I'm going to have a successful life that this $2,000, $3,000 doesn't matter at all, <laughs> Or my life was so shitty that it it doesn't matter that I cleared it out. Either way, you can justify a lot by thinking yeah. that. You, you can do it goddamn near anything with that logic. Uh, so, <laughs> so all of this, uh, you know, with the accountants and the advisors, you you can find a way to you know justify this stuff in your brain and say you deserve it. And that's what happens too. Like you know, in in divorce, I'm assuming you know if you're if you're doing numbers like this, it's probably not an amicable thing. And if there was cheating or something, like you know, in my case, it's like you know, it was almost you, you're you're getting it's a penalty. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Uh, and those numbers can get pretty fucking big, man. They can get <laughs> pretty fucking big. What I learned too in my experience was that, in if you're getting divorced, you can either be nice or win the divorce. You cannot do both. Like I was, I was like, I don't want, I want to have a relationship with her after the fact. I want to be friendly. I want to be able to co-parent well. So we're not going to sling mud. We're not, we're not even really going to play hardball. Like, and my lawyer was kind of like, well, then what the fuck am I supposed to do? <laughs> like I totally handcuffed him. Uh, and so, you know, I certainly did not win my divorce. <laughs> Financially speaking, I did not win this divorce at all. But, you know, we just went to this 
beach house together for the first time. And I go over there for breakfast and dinner and we hang out and shit. So in my mind, you know, I, I won. We all won in that regard. But money wise, definitely did not. <laughs> and uh, uh, Dr. Dre is either going to have to decide whether he wants to be friendly and just give her two million dollars a fucking month. Yo, or Dre, win this you fucking know. win, bro. Yeah. Like, it's one thing when you're raising children. Yeah. Oh, Your children oh. are adults. Yeah. Fucking win. Yeah, no <laughs> and like, and yeah, if. That's the other thing too is like I I have no I have no qualms like the money that I that I give is going towards the kids and mm. rent and things that like matter you know if I had to be forking over money for like right there enumerated like clothes and entertainment charitable contributions I I mean that it would drive me nuts <laughs> I would go fucking insane over that shit uh so but then I guess you know the flip side also there is like if you know, if he can, if that's chump change to him, I mean, even if you're really rich, that's that's a lot of money <laughs> to, it's, to, it's to just fork over eighteen million dollars a year, tax free. Yo, yo, fuck, fuck Nicole Young. Go sign Jalen Ramsey, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Twenty four yeah. million dollars a year. Just, am, I, am I doing that math right? right? Uh, well, yeah, I think well, I just said two? eighteen. It's, it's two million a month. Yeah, twenty four million dollars a year. Yeah, Jalen Ramsey only costs twenty. Nicole Young ain't worth twenty four. Oh God. Tre'Davious Young. Uh, Tre'Davious Brown. Tre'Davious what? The mm -hmm. Bills, Tre'Davious, I forget it, whatever. Uh, Tre I think it's Tre'Davious Young. Whatever it is, he's seventeen point four. Yeah, you, there's you could get Tom Brady's twenty. You can get Nicole Young. Bro. Nicole Young is not worth Tom Brady money. Here, uh, I'm gonna give you. There's package A, Nicole Young. Package B is Tom Brady and four million dollars in your pocket. <laughs> Which one do you think you want? That is. I do believe uh, when you reach, I want to see. I want to see what the highest paid annual contracts in sports are right now, and see what Nicole. I bet Nicole Brown's a top five paid player in in, in sports, the sports world. No, no, well, because because the NBA is getting nutty. The NBA has like forty one million dollars a year type guys, ah, but it, but in the NFL, no doubt. In the NFL, minus like Patrick Mahomes, if you're if you're in the 20, 20 mid twenties range, you are you're cream of the crop. I mean that is. Uh, and and you know what it is, Dr. Dre could be worth you know billions at this point. I believe there's a certain, at a certain point, no matter how much money you have, it it's a matter of principle. It's just not. It's like I, yeah, I can afford this, but I really shouldn't have to. And there's probably a level of like you know what you know why we're getting divorced or why we don't get along is partly because like you just spend my money and you're reckless and you're crazy with it and so i'm not going to just give in to to this even though this is ashtray money to me even though i saw a quote uh, about steve cohen this is in, in the book it's called uh, like it's called like the black edge or something like that all about steve cohen uh who the, is the guy who bought the mets and he got in a lot of trouble with the sec and they uh, fined him six hundred million dollars at one point, and they said she's definitely a top one hundred contract sports contract of all time. She's oh yeah, just above Yelich. Just above, yeah. <laughs> you can just get a baseball MVP or, or <laughs> Steve Cohen uh, got got fined like six hundred eighteen million, and they said he was elated. He was <laughs> like, no fucking problem, paid in cash. And the person who wrote the book said he'll find that in between the cushions of his Maybach. <laughs> like, and but. 618, and you're like, oh, fuck, I got yeah. off the easy on no that No problem. One. But, you know, Cohen's probably the exception. I think most of these guys, especially, you know, artists and entertainers, while they do become lavishly rich, a lot of times you spend the beginning, like, on couches, like, you know, borrowing money to get studio time and or selling drugs or whatever, you know, how all these rappers get their start. So you do come from, like, somewhat humble beginnings, and there's a point where it's just like, I, no, like, I, I'm not giving into this i don't care how much money i have or how much i can easily break this off on you fuck that because it just it'll just eat at you <laughs> i mean cutting that a two million dollar check every month is like <sighs> i'd have to do that direct deposit style like yeah almost I like i do with my 401k like i couldn't write a check to because i'd be like fuck that i'll spend somewhere else yeah like it, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, gotta yeah, go yeah. like i don't even know out of, sight, about out of mind I, I mean just... i i transfer the money in my situation and uh, so I have to do it like manually. I probably should just set up an auto one. Yeah. But um, now, like I said, I'm pretty comfortable with like where it's going and how it's being used. But in the beginning, when like things were contentious and you know, uh, still 
are you know whatever i that was a soul crushing moment every like click confirm like <laughs> but shout out to all all my uh, single dads out there when you're cutting checks for alimony child support's one thing you got to do it or you're fucking deadbeat if you're doing alimony and fucking entertainment funds <laughs> oh man that's got to be the worst i've ever heard uh, i know um remember when we read up on um Brendan Fraser? No. Brendan Fraser, uh, God bless him, is he got hit hard. And I think it kind of like ruined him in a way. Um, uh, you know, not nearly Dr. Dre money, $2 million a month, but he owed 75 k a month. This is Brendan Fraser, who's been in like Encino, man. And he got, you know, some mummy, mummy money, no doubt. But when you're paying 75 k a month just like in perpetuity, uh, I think he like bankrupted him. I think he like did not survive it. I mean, there, I I do not have a lot of money, <laughs> uh, but like I always think if we were still like one uh, one you know bank account, it would be it all kind of comes out in the wash one way or another. But now that it feels like it should be like quote unquote my money, and I'm sending it over here, like there's not a lot left over. <laughs> but if we if it was all one bank account, it would still be going to the kids and all that shit, so it would all be the same. But uh, you know, if, if you got a vibe to it, yeah. And if you if you don't have, you know, if you're if, again, if you're Dr. Dre and you have a billion, whatever. If you're like, you got to keep earning to keep up with it, and you hit hard times, you don't but get even as many like, movie roles. Like, like that's the thing in the entertainment world, and even like for me, I don't know what's gonna happen. Like, I my the formula and like what we agreed upon was kind of based on what's currently happening. I don't know if 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 gambling is like the only thing that Barstool cares about one day, and like and the podcast stop, whatever. I'd be like, I don't. I don't have that anymore. I need alimony, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like you're my sugar mama. Like, I am I unhirable. I mean, there was. There have was... you seen what I said in the last <laughs> decade? For real, alimony, please. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be the ultimate twist? I mean, there was. I, I think only up until the last couple years, I was always. Uh, she was always the sugar mama. I was the sugar baby for the longest time, and you know. So if you know, if we went back to that somehow, I'd be like, yeah. I got nothing. Can't do it. Uh, City Island, here I come, baby. <laughs> Moving back in with moms and pops. Yeah, right now, it's a very fine line, very precarious in my spot. I, I bet on myself. That's another thing with uh, with like divorces. Uh, if you're going through it, my my lawyer was kind of like I I tell I tell the guys that I represent and the women too, but he's you know said that mostly this happens with guys like. Um, you you either gotta you gotta be honest with yourself. You either gotta like bet on yourself for the future, or you gotta be honest if you think your best days are like behind you. He was like, I you know I, I worked with like traders and stuff who are like out of their prime, and they're like, I gotta make sure this is like a good deal for right now because I'm not gonna be continuing to earn. Mm. Whereas with me, like Barstool was on the rise, and we got this equity coming, so I was kind of like, all right, let's like pay up front now and all that shit because like hopefully in the future everything's gravy with money. But you know that's a that's a real look yourself in the mirror and be honest with yourself for a change because, you know, the next, like, 18 years or however many years you're going to do with your kids, it could be a long fucking long time for you if you're not honest with yourself. If you're in college right now and asked to define a risk, write Kevin's story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. And send that to us. <laughs> yeah, please. Write your college this essay is on a risk. risk. <laughs> Just put a picture of my fucking mug in page six. God damn it. <laughs> Shout out to Dre. Me and Dre, and we can have a good conversation, me and, me and Andre Young. Um, yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a wrap for Keeping Up with the Kardashians. 20 seasons filmed over 14 years of television. Uh, Kim Kardashian announced the other day on social media through like a little, you know, phony press release, little made up press release of her own, that the family has decided to uh, call it a day. And... I've always been like a staunch supporter of the Kardashians, not a fan because I don't watch their show. I would guarantee, I would, I would say that combined lifetime, I've seen. I'll go a minute and a half of the show. Really? Yeah. I mean, I've definitely seen. And they're all just clips on social of something Kanye's doing. Yeah, I'll watch. Like I watched. Um, again, I don't know if I've ever sat down and watched a full episode, but I've definitely like, I've never tuned in. Like, all right, it's you know. Uh, I'm assuming it's like a Sunday night show. Sunday at 8. I've never done that. But um, like when they got robbed in Paris, I wanted to see that. I saw a few minutes of that. Um, and, you know, just, yeah, I've just stumbled through it over the years. But definitely not a viewer of it. But 
I, I support the fuck out of them in the sense of there's like three main things in my mind. One, when everyone's like they don't have talent. Yeah, they do. Well, yeah. Yes, we've always said, I think their talent is being famous. I think they're the I, best famous no, people I, in the I world. Think their talent is marketing. And yeah, I think that's right. something that right. like, that's something that like famous marketers get credit for. Definitely. They don't. They don't because they're not, they're just doing their own marketing for themselves. Right. It's like if the Kardashians, if you found out that the Kardashians also made the, and this, maybe this is what's going to happen, like Addison Ray is the TikTok star who has her mom and her dad and her brothers and sisters are all kind of, they all have personalities and a lot of people, the rumors are that they're kind of being groomed to be the next Kardashians. They, if the, if the Kardashians, they, they fucking better be. Otherwise, it's exceptionally weird that Kourtney Kardashian hangs out with an 18 year old all the time. Courtney's, is that how old Addison Ray is? Maybe. She might be younger. 18 to 20 year old. Yeah. Courtney's like 42. Courtney's uh, the same age as her mom, Addison Ray's mom. So like when you're hanging out and you're like, they're like, in the pool together, like taking pictures in like their thong and doing TikTok dances with a woman the same age as your mother. That is insane. So weird. Yeah. Uh, and, but if you found out that Kim and the Kardashians took the Ray family and applied, I uh, think that's actually her middle name, but whatever, that family and applied all of their knowledge and then made them bajillionaires, you'd be like, I would hope people would be like, all right, they get credit for that. But yeah. because they're kind of just marketing themselves, it doesn't feel that yeah, way. Yeah, dude, it's, it's, it's very weird the, the, the hate Kardashians get. Again, I'm not a fan of the show. I don't fucking despise them. I actually, I think they're pretty impressive people. But like Ryan Seacrest gets more credit for the Kardashians yeah. than the fucking Kardashians Yeah, get. which is just like, not. Like Seacrest is a genius, man. Like, right. No, the Kardashians are geniuses. And, and specifically Kris Jenner. We but, all know, you know, the devil works hard. I actually Kris think works she, works, she gets too much credit. Yeah, it, it kind of like swung the other way. Yeah. But she is like the mama bear and, and she does run that shit but i think even i think their talents being famous you're you're saying more specifically their marketing but even i get the argument that people are making they don't sing they don't dance they don't play basketball they you know the tr the, the the traditional sense of the word talent you're right all the more reason i respect them yeah like yeah they don't have talent and they're worth a billion or whatever you know like to me billions i'd imagine I'm sure if although like uh, all, kylie's thing was like completely fake right but it, but it was like still like several hundred million yeah. you know it's not like she was like making it all up um so in my mind like and that's i you know stink it till you make it i feel like they deserve more credit for that uh and and two my other big argument is y y all the people who criticize them you do the same thing as the Kardashians. You're like, oh, these they're, they're so uh, shallow and vapid on social media. It's like, fucking what so are you. Social media is. Yeah, it's like, and I guess some people say, like, the Kardashians created this world. Again, if you believe that, I don't really. But if you believe that, like, okay, well, then that means they, like, influence the world. Right. So that does that argument doesn't hold water. But you do the same. You're posting thirst traps. You're broadcasting your life on social media because you want the validation and the fame uh, and the attention and the satisfaction, and you don't make any money doing it. Yeah, everyone you do it who for hates 10 likes. on them being like they don't even do anything. Well, fucking neither do you. Right. You don't and, have and a, they have or, billions. Or if they don't do anything, then you can do that. Yeah. Why aren't you on E? There's plenty of people have a sex what, tape when they're like Suck Ray J's fucking yeah. dick. Which I've, <coughs> I've gone back. I think when I first saw that, I was like prepubescent. His dick's not as impressive as I remember. Um, let me, let's, let's do that right now because <laughs> I feel like I've seen it relatively recently and I certainly wouldn't turn my nose up. I'm not it. turning my nose, but I, I, as I recalled it, it was like, like some a hammer fucking time. Mandingo, like fucking Lex oh, Steel. Yeah. Thing. I mean, it's not it's that, like, it's but a fucking I, dick. I mean, Kim's got two full like hands on it, you know, it's like two <laughs> and then there's like enough to suck coming <laughs> out of that. So... I mean, Kim's got dainty hands. Everyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of her many plastic surgeries. She's like, I got hands like Feidelberg. I got to fix these things. <laughs> Imagine if Feidelberg. I get liposuction God, on my hands, please. God, thank God you're not gay. Because if you were getting head from fights and he had his sausage fingers wrapped around your dick while he's blowing you, yeah. or if he's like, imagine if you're poor. I mean, Feidelberg fingering you has just got to be terrible, man. I'd fucking. I'd fucking start sucking my own finger instead. Oh. <laughs> like, I want to hit that thing to dangle in the back of my throat. <laughs> like, it's harder to suck John's fingers than it is to suck his dick. <laughs> by the by, by the way, uh, a funny tweet that kind of relates to all this uh, from our former coworker Ellie Schnitt. Best of luck to Ellie is in all her new endeavors. But a very specific tweet of hers last night. Uh, 
po- like masquerading as a general tweet. I don't know who he, I don't know who needs to hear this, but your dick isn't big. I just have tiny, dainty hands, and I love to lie. I mean, that's a very specific. <laughs> that is directed at somebody. She's like, no, no, no. I just have tiny paws. You know, your I dick's mean, not that big. It fucking could be directed at me, not from Ellie, <laughs> but just like if it, in the, I don't need to know who needs to hear. Let's this clarify. Thing. Not, not from, from Ellie. Not, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, absolutely not. Um, very nice girl, but no, that's not what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Uh, Thank God but, for but her. But like, it could be that could you could be that someone could say it to me. Yeah. Someone could say it to me. You know, no, you know, you know, you know, you know, you get, you get the your dick's perfect. Yes, <laughs> like, oh. that's saying my dick's got a nice personality, man. Oh. That's fucking awful. <laughs> that's like saying your dick's got a good sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, your dick's spunky. <laughs> I had a girl uh, who who would refer to it as like. The PP, not PP, the PP, the perfect penis. And I was like, stop, 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 stop it. Anything other than it big means it's not, you know? I mean, yeah. no, it's just have you perfect. ever asked? It's perfect for me. Have I ever asked? Fuck no, bro. Yeah. Just like I've never asked what your number is. Right. I don't give a it, shit. It's a question you should not ask. I've definitely <laughs> asked it before, though. In a way that, like, I really meant it as just, like, curiosity. I wasn't, like, fishing, and I wasn't going to be insecure about it. I was just like, you know, have you ever, like, fucked a, a giant dick? And, um, and you were hoping she says you? No, it, no, actually, it was not even posed that way. I guess it, it probably did come across as fishing, but I really wasn't. But I think I said, like, um, have you, have you, like, fucked somebody with a bigger dick than me? And I, I, I think I got, like, the, um, no, like, they, like, it's all been, like, you know, like, about that. Like, about that same size. And I was just like, nah, you fucked a bigger dick than me. <laughs> that's either, again, that's either, like, a yes <laughs> Or a lie. That's basically. one of the stupidest things that, like, God, actually, it's not stupid. It's not stupid. I'm not, guys get insecure about that. I don't fucking care. What, what, wait, what? Just about, like, dick sizes and stuff. Do you think, like, it's, it's like, not what, stupid to be, to be insecure about it? Yeah. I th- oh, I think it's totally normal to be insecure right, about it. Right. But, like, I was yeah. gonna say, like, it's so dumb, like, all guys do it. It's not dumb. No. It makes a lot of fucking it, sense. It, it's, like, you know, same for girls. It's, it's a, it's a body image, yeah. body image issue. And, of course, I mean, you can say size doesn't matter. Like, it does. Yeah. I don't think it, it literally matters in the sense, like, I think when girls are being their most honest, like, a huge dick, they say, is actually a bad thing because it either hurts or you can't put it certain places or do certain things with it. Uh, but, like, they want it to be a certain size. <laughs> and if it's not, they're, they're going to be, they're not going to run away from you, but they're, you know, it's like you want a girl with, like, a perfect ass. And if she doesn't have one, you're like, okay. I can work with I this. I'm happy, that. but it's not, you know, ideal or or like a perfect. So same thing for guys with dicks. Because if because if a dick, but is if I big, say you have a perfect ass, that means a lot different thing than you. Oh, I have a, perfect a, per, a perfect ass means that's a, a compliment. Ass, yeah. A perfect dick means I'd like to talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> but I I also think a perfect dick means it's it's okay. Yeah, no, it's good. You know? I got a marriage dick. Right, yeah, right. Like, that was what uh, Violet was talking Violet about. Violet said day. that. Yeah, you yeah, don't, you don't marry, you marry the marry. big dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you fuck the big dick. You marry the guy with, with a with an average dick. <laughs> but it is. I mean, if a girl, if you have a big dick and you like fuck a girl, she's going to the group chat and like bragging or excitedly talking about it. And if you have, and so like if you don't have that, you're gonna be. It's like you wish that was happening. Mm-hmm. You wish you were getting that shout out in the group chat, and you're not. So you're allowed. You to made be some great jokes that. at dinner, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a, that is a funny thing. Like a cartoon needs to do that, where like the dick is like like a comedian with a microphone. You know what I mean? Like I'm telling great jokes out here. My dick is. My, you're gonna be okay with my dick because of these jokes that I'm getting off during appetizers. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, don't make no mistake. It ain't perfect. If it's perfect, if it's the. Uh, the last word you want to hear about your dick is perfect. It's perfect. Anything, maybe just like small, <laughs> <laughs> shitty dick, you know? Other than that, you do not want to hear perfect. You don't want to hear, it's like, where is it? Is it in yet? Perfect. That's, that's the line of three. And you find me in number three, baby. Is it in yet? You ever hear that? I've never, no, heard, never that. heard that. that, that I'm feels, number three, I'm perfect. That feels like, that feels like something that's not real. I, I like can't a movie trope. That, that would know? be like a fucking. I mean, like I'm sure it could happen be with like a micro penis. Dick, like a. But but even if I also think it's it can't have happened really because a girl would have to be brutally unaware of like what to do and not to do. You know what I mean? To say that to someone is fucked up. It's it's insanity. Yeah. You like you might it might even be a micro penis and you might not know if it's in or not. To say that just, to someone is just, just it's just mean. Let the little fella hammer away down there for a minute. <laughs> 
<laughs> God, thank God for oral sex. <laughs> thank God oral sex is a thing. Think about all the other guys with like mediocre dicks who just like if there was no other way to make up for it, you know? Imagine if you just had just, your dick. Just had to work with my hips. Although I got good <sighs> hips. I just Casey complimented my hips the other day, actually. Oh, like the look of your hips? No, my fucking fucking my swaying ability here. I was let's, doing. Let's clarify this story <laughs> <It> before. <laughs> am I right, Nick? Butterbrick tell the story Nick, way too casual. Nick was listening. Wait. It was on radio, and I was dancing, and she's like, "Oh wait, Vites actually has okay. some good hips." So I'm just saying. I got let's fucking, make sure that's. On I the got record. nice ass hips, man. I can fucking <laughs> these things roll like Poseidon. <laughs> Roll. <laughs> wow. You want a Greek god in the ocean? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what's going on. Uh, <laughs> Let's I, clarify. I got up early this morning. I'm just in a good you mood. Are, you are ridiculous right now <laughs> calling yourself the Greek god of the ocean. What a ridiculous. Well, all right. Uh, here's you a question. You want the ocean in the ocean? He you, is my yeah, trident. Yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> Tsunami's coming. You, if you, since you open this door, I'm gonna walk through it. Okay. When you're fucking, are you like rolling? Yeah, on them? I roll. Yeah, do you roll? I'll do like a, a not a roll, but like a, I guess a swivel. Swivel? I can't swivel. I can swivel. I don't think you. I don't think you roll as much as you Ooh, think you do. I'll give you, like, I'll, I'll like keep, be dead in the eye. Because while I roll. I, I, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. I'm staring you. I'm looking right through down me. the barrel, man. Right into my soul. Fidelberg looked through my eyes down to my dick as he was rolling on him. Mama rolling that body. I mean, this is so uncomfortable. I don't think you're rolling as much as you think you're rolling. I roll, motherfucker. I, don't think, I think because you have a perfect penis, you can't roll. I can because roll. Because I think if you had a, you need like a mandingo because it's coming all the way out if you're really rolling. Yeah, it is. I'm rolling. So you're rolling. You're, you're, Coming completely out of her pussy. No, not completely out. Like tips still <laughs> tips somewhat in. <laughs> I mean, you probably have a bigger dick than you're letting on. Then, if you can really roll all the way out and all the way back in and I'm keep fucking, it connected, I'm like a fat guy doing the worm on the oh. dance floor. <laughs> Your body is a dance floor. Your body is a dance floor. <laughs> can I tell you what's even worse about what's going on in my mind right now? <laughs> Do you know what I think of when I hear fat guy doing the worm? <laughs> Frank, Frank the Tank. The tank. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Frank the Tank doing a Miami Dolphins victory worm. Just Because that's probably, you know what, Nick, for the promo clip, we're going to do like a, it's like a guy, the uh, it's like a what you think you are versus what you really are. You think that you're like Scotty Too Hotty doing the worm, and you're Frank the Tank when you're, when you're rolling like Poseidon on your poor fucking girlfriend. That woman, speaking of charitable contributions, <laughs> what a charity case from her. She's like, I got to go have sex with my boy. He's going to roll like Poseidon on me. He's going to flop around like Frank the Tank on top of me. <laughs> Heavens to motherfucking Betsy. <laughs> this is... How do we go from the Kardashians? See, this is what the Kardashians do. Yeah. <laughs> Impressive fucking family. You inspire the, the creativity and inspire conversation like this. Jesus Christ on the cross. Want to talk about gender reveals? Yeah, fuck those people. A lot of things come and go, you know, uh, especially these like nowadays on the internet. Like, Karen was a funny phrase, and then we beat that to death. Yeah. Uh, living rent-free inside your head, we put that one in the dirt. Mm-hmm. These things, they come and go fast. The uh, Yankees season. <laughs> the Yankees being a, a winning franchise. Yeah. Actually, that didn't come and go quickly. That took about, like, 120 years, but it's over now. <laughs> They're done. And certainly this season came and went for them. But when it comes to nutrition, you don't need fads. You need facts. Here's a fact for you. Collagen is the single most abundant protein in your body. It Coll- hold- I need more. Apparently, I need more collagen. It holds everything together. It holds your bones together, your muscles, and your tendons, and your hair, and your skin, and your nails, and even your GI tract. I clearly don't have enough collagen because my body's falling apart. Apparently, once you hit your mid-20s, collagen production slows down, and that's how you get lines and wrinkles and decreased mobility. Oh, Yo, I am slow. I and mean, I was never quick at all, but like when I'm playing with my kids, I'm like, uh, oh, by the way, let me ask you this question. How many chuggas? Because I heard you have a horrible answer. It's clearly 12. That's not as bad as I, I mean, that's a terrible answer. I thought for some reason you had an odd number. No. If, if you say an odd number, you're crazy. No, it's not. Chugga chugga, 12, I, I actually came around on. It's four. It's, it's actually two chugga chuggas. The fact that we're even talking about individual chuggas is the problem. It's chugga chugga. It's chugga chugga, chugga chugga, choo choo. But 
What you're talking about is when a train is completely stationary and getting going. Then it's twelve. It's, it's all about then, the build of it. Yeah. Chugga 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 chugga. No, 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 chugga, no, no, chugga, no, no. Chugga, you're doing chugga. it wrong. Choo, choo! No, no, no yeah. you're doing it wrong. You're doing them too fast. No. You're doing it wrong. No, that's but the point the is iteration. the point is I'm a chugga, chugga, I'm a stationary chugga, train. Chugga, 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 I am a stationary chugga. train <laughs> that needs to get going, and I have slow mobility. I have slow recovery, and clearly, I don't have enough collagen in my body. Collagen is something that we're such stupid people. Definitely, men in definitely. But like. Women have been preaching the good word of collagen forever. I, I never even All considered taking it until Bubs put it in protein. I know. I'm like, oh, I got a little something masculine there. You're right. Now you worry about my little cool. nails. Now I'm a, now I'm a tough now guy. I'm tough. Uh, there's a lot of collagen products out there, but in terms of excellence, Bubs has cornered the market. It's 100% st- sustainably sourced, grass fed, pasture uh, pasture raised peptides that you can put into your um, into your protein and get your collagen on. Your joints will thank you. Uh, and your skin will thank you, and your ability to bend and flex pain-free. So your girlfriend will thank you when you're out here rolling like Poseidon. Uh, uh, hey, baby, uh, my collagen is ee. flexing on you tonight. Ooh. Ho. Yeah. <laughs> Go to bubsnaturals.com. It's B-U-B-S naturals.com. Promo code KFC and get 20% off your first order of collagen. Your whole body will thank you. As it stands today, as we record this right now, 10,000 acres burned down in California due to the gender reveal pyrotechnics. And I think... Wait, what did you say? Sorry. 10,000 acres. Oh, acres. I think 20,000 displaced. 20,000 people displaced. 10,000 acres burned down because of a gender reveal that used a pyrotechnics display. And I think... I mean, that kid... That kid is probably like, m- like marred by by, like he. There might be like some final destination shit. Like that kid's life is probably gonna be fucked. If there's if there's any sort of like karma or kismet or like or anything in this world, I think bad things are gonna happen to that family and that kid because of this. I think I think it's like it's hippie. It's Northern California, right? So it's hippie motherfuckers. No, wait, I, I think it's see this. Is what I don't know. I think San Francisco is is orange, but I think I think this was down south. I think this was like L.A. Oh, I forgot South is... I forgot San Francisco. Yeah, that always thing. fucks me. What a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, California the, fucking, the fucking... So point. goddamn long. They're, and... they're hippies anyway. I don't yeah, give a yeah. shit. Yep. They're all hippies, and they're probably going to name them some fucking name like Eternal. Yeah. This is the Eternal Flame. Yeah. They're going to lean into this, you think? I guess that's the move. I would. Like, I, like I, I burned right. down half the state for you, son. Okay. Right? So, so many parents... What did my parents do for me? Fucking got me a fucking... First of all, no gender reveal. Still don't know, really. <laughs> John's gonna have a gender reveal at the age of thirty-three. Like we, we, it took a long time to figure it's it still out. Still a fucking flip of the coin. <laughs> All because I didn't get a goddamn gender reveal. And well, I mean, if your parents just did some pink or blue shit, your whole you might have like, whole oh, thing might have been different. I'd understand everything about the world. You at this would, you would probably dress but different, world. act different, live different. If it was just like I'm a boy, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big boy. <laughs> Pinocchio over here. He doesn't even know if he's a real boy yet. Thirty two years they, in. They fucking didn't have a gender reveal party for me. They fucking got me a hand me down crib, put me in a stupid fucking apartment with a fucking bottle of beer, and that's all. That's it. That was me. You re put yourself. I was. I was left yeah. with just strangers yeah. all the time. What? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Just. Just. <laughs> just, just weird babysitters. I mean, not strangers. They're babysitters, yeah. but they were strangers. Yeah. You know, they weren't going on checking websites. They were. They're oh, standing on the yeah, sidewalk yeah, being yeah. like, who wants to watch this fucking thing? And then they'd leave me with that with that person. Bro, I used to run babysitters out of town. Yeah. There was this woman. Oh, uh, yeah, Kevin. Mrs. So did I. There was Mrs. Car- <laughs> yeah. I, I, I trapped them in my basement. I literally tortured women. <laughs> when, I was, when I was like a baby, though, I used to do this thing where I would cry so much I would pass out. Uh, I would turn blue. My eyes would roll back in my head, and I would go unconscious for like, you know, quick, you know, matter of seconds. I don't know, 10, 20, 30 seconds, whatever. And it got to the point where my parents were like, you know, they'd, we, I'd be at parties and the baby's crying and and they'd be like, ah, call 911. And my mom and dad would be like, he's, he's fine. fine. He'll yeah. wake up in a minute. But uh, I used to cry so, so much uh, that there was this woman across the street from us, uh, Mrs. Carmine or Carmody, something like that. Carm something. And she was like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I can't do it anymore. Like, I cannot babysit your child. She was our neighbor, too. So it was very like, oh, I got to run out real quick. Like, do you mind watching him? And she was like, 
No. I'm out. I will not. No. I cannot do this anymore. I respect that. Yeah. It's probably a hard conversation to have. Yeah. Big, but that's, sometimes... I mean, and so that's, it, think about how long it took to have that conversation. Right. She probably wanted to do it like a year earlier <laughs> than she did. And eventually was just like, nope, cannot do it. Uh, but, but so those are, those are our childhoods. If we were given this grand entrance to the world, this king's burned welcome. Burned down. Really. Yeah. This is like scorched earth. Like, see, I, I think it's one of two things. I think either this cha- this this baby is like a Damien baby, like it's possessed by Satan himself, and the flames of 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 eternal damnation are like welcoming him into this world, and he's going to be like death and destruction will follow him everywhere he goes, which sounds like a bad thing unless you lean into it. I would name this kid Grim. He's the Grim Reaper, <laughs> like Grim, middle name Reaper, last name Jones, whatever. Grim Jones, and he if he leans into it, he's just like, yes, I am a harbinger of death. Like, do not fuck with me. And then he might be like a CEO or an athlete or something. A but, sociopath. Well, sure. Well, he, for it to be either, either of those, you have to, to be. be yeah. So, be, you know, if you're going to go big or go home, you're going to do something, do it right. If he runs around town being like, oh my God, like when I was, when I came into this world, my parents like killed fucking tons of animals and displaced 20,000 people. Oh no. He needs to be like, fuck yeah. Yeah. I, I own I, it. I own this own fucking it, gender reveal. Gender fire. reveal parties are getting a bad rap over this. You think you think it's coming back around? I think it's time to have gender reveal parties mandatory. <laughs> I think, I mean, what a take. I mean, what a take. Look, Sometimes we get accused of being contrarian. <laughs> this might be the pinnacle of it. Right now, everybody hates gender reveals. That everybody hates this this kid and this family. We are wishing him and predicting him great success, and you are saying, let's do more gender reveals. I think, I think you got to do it. I think everyone's got to mm. do it. It's just it's just something that has to happen. Look, as parents, you decide absolutely everything for your kids. You might as well just decide the gender, too. <laughs> Tell them, right? People leave it open-ended. No, 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 no. Boy. Girl. You that's what's happening. Boy, what I would Catholic, do. Bruins fan. That's what I got. Well, I didn't get the boy part, was- <laughs> but the other two. <laughs> it looked under the hood like... I think it's a, it's a dick. It's a dick. Yeah. It's a dick. You know but we'll let him make his own choice today. Look, look, that's led me. Right? Honestly, if, if you let children think about it, think about it. Letting adults make their own decisions doesn't go right. Letting little children decide things for themselves Can't have it. is a catastrophe. Yeah. I'll tell you what you are. If I don't my care dad had just told me I there. was a boy, I'd be a space astronaut yeah. by a space construction worker by now. <laughs> that's a, I'd be up on the ISS. No, no, no. So you wouldn't be. You would be homeless. And a, and, a, and, a, and a degenerate derelict because you would be trying to be an astronaut. Well, I could be an astronaut. He told, no, you couldn't be. No, you couldn't I be. Could be. It's not the, that hard. the last thing on earth you could be, literally, is an astronaut. I don't think so. I mean, the just, last what? profession. I, I, can get, I can be an astronaut so easy. The last profession on earth you could achieve, astronaut. I can't drive the plane, but. He called it a plane, folks. <laughs> He's so not an astronaut, he just called it a plane. I can't drive the shuttle. And he, he said, drive. <laughs> you don't drive it, and it's not a plane. Whatever. I can't. Look, I can go to space. Could you imagine if, if yeah, could you imagine if, if it was Commander Feidelberg? Like, imagine if you had to respect him like he was the crew leader. <laughs> Fuck no. off. Oh, we'd have the worst crew. I bet don't. Ever. Don't be nice to me. Like, yeah. Don't worry about it. We're good. Yeah. Was, like, I, don't, I don't need respect. I don't need you to follow orders. Yeah. Do whatever you want. Like, you can fly the plane, right? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to be out back because I don't know any of this shit. But I I'm going to drive the I just, thing. I'm really honestly, oh, I'm just doing this whole thing to prove a point to my friend. He said I couldn't do it. And, and my father. Just, and my father, really. <laughs> <laughs> You're not mad at me. You're mad yeah. at your dad. Just, just take me up real quick, and we'll come back down, and we'll be all set, and I'll, I'll go back to the podcast. Bro, there's this scene in that new show away that I'm watching. Hillary Swank in space going to Mars. It's a good space show. It's nothing revolutionary. It's you know, we go to space. There's some, there's some drama at home on the planet Earth that we didn't see coming. There's international politics up there. You know, we've done this a million times before. But there's a scene where Hillary Swank is doing like a spacewalk to repair something. And 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 I, my, my my palms were sweating, man. It was like the thought of doing those spacewalks where you might just float into the abyss. Yeah, is one of the more like that gives me anxiety. That like, does thinking about that. One of the more powerful stories I ever read was in like I, like third grade uh, about an astronaut who get gets like lost on a. It's not obviously not a real story. Um, gets like falls off on a moonwalk or whatever Ugh. the fuck it is. And because you just float until you die. He's just you know? floating until he dies, but he sees himself. He sees a rock coming at him, or an asteroid, I suppose they call it in space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Let me drive the plane by the rocks. <laughs> and go out he's, back real quick. <laughs> he's spinning, so he doesn't, like, he can't stop. Because That's the other no thing, gravity. too, is you don't just, like, I don't think you just gently float away. I think you, like, spiral. And he's just wondering if he's going to hit it with his back like a coward or hit it face, face on kill himself. like a hero. 
And I was like, boy, that's a, that's a tough one. I don't think it is. I, 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 don't, I think you go face first. Oh, I don't care either way. Yeah. No, I think I don't think you want to be injured and spiraling to your death. I think you want to just smash your face and die. Oh, well, I think you die. No matter. If you get hit by an asteroid, Kevin. <laughs> I think I, I think that one's... Well, I mean, you, you characterize it as a rock. Well, so we're talking uh, like a, you know, a gigantic... It's an asteroid. body it's an asteroid. that's going to smash him. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, oh, he's you, oh, crashing right. into... Oh, so then in that case, who cares? Yeah. He's a shit. Yeah. We, we, we used to fucking... I'll be honest, that's still so sucks fucking... Then, Wrapped up in your toxic, toxic masculinity, spinning through. I got a face just like a man. Yeah, fuck off, man. Get it right at my ass. May maybe, <laughs> but just you know, I always wanted to explore that right before I died. I don't even know if I'm a boy or not. My parents didn't throw me a gender reveal. Just blood shove, blast me. Shove a big rock up my ass. Put that comet up my ass. Do it like like fucking medieval torture where they used to sit you on a pole. Shove an asteroid up my ass. That's how I want to go. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll tell you how the sausage is made, folks. We started this episode. We kind of started to come in hot. We pressed pause. We came back. Still is hot. Still on that same trajectory. And honestly, it's just the kind of like, it's just, it's just like, I, I, before you got in here, I just talked about how tired I was and how like out of it I am. Yeah. I'll fucking turn it on. I believe sometimes, um, somebody asked me the other day about like, you always have to be on. And that is one of the parts of this job that sucks. It's like, as much as the cube job sucks. There were days where I'd be like, I'm going to go to work, and I'm not going to do a single thing. I'm going to turn the <laughs> computer on. I'm going to steal money today. Absolutely. I'm going to be a thief. I'm going to turn the computer on. I'm going to look at it, and I'm not even going to, like, touch the keyboard or the mouse. And that was just like, I could, you could do that. You can't do that here. And someone asked me about, like, that that kind of, like, struggle, or then, or also, like, if you're tired, if you're sick, if you're upset, anxious, you go through a tragedy, whatever. And I I likened it to, honestly, like, sports, like, when when people are like, how did how did Brett Favre play that Monday night football game after his dad died? I, I really feel like I could come in here and do the podcast under any circumstances. Yeah. I could flip the switch and we could talk about cost, uh, comets going up our assholes for an hour and a half. And then we could like I'm gonna call my dad and tell him to kill himself right now. This is a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, while we're on the phone, real quick, just just so I can prove All right, yeah, yeah. got it. Let's, Let's do it. <laughs> Voicemails. But I really think like and the cameras could cut off and then I would start like resume crying or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think I could always I could always do this podcast. Yeah, you got the bright lights. Yeah, it really is. Under the bright lights that are just in this room, not like the bright lights of Broadway or a stadium or anything, just this room. But I could do it. Um anyway. Back to space, and then back to gender reveals. Gender, gender reveal. reveals, yeah. What I would do, <laughs> and I don't want it to. I don't want people to. I don't want to. I don't want you to c confuse this with like, I'm not uh, gender. I'm not binary, or I'm gender fluid, or whatever. I but I would just start fucking with people with my gender reveal. I would invite everybody, and I would piss them off by having to bring a gift and take their time, and I would come, and then the smoke would be like green, <laughs> and people would just be like, "Wherever the green oh, goblin." I don't know what that means. Yeah. What green goblin? <laughs> We we are He's giving birth human. to uh, <laughs> Spider Man's arch nemesis. <laughs> just 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 like or just like what if it was just smoke, just like gray. Like yeah, just I'm like, having a pope. <laughs> just just we just let people guess. <laughs> what do you think? I do kind of like that though. What, what do you, if, what do you think this means? What if you are okay? So this kid we have said is going to be the son of Satan because of the flames that he's caused. What if the smoke? All right, green means you're going to make money. Gray means you're going to be a pope. <laughs> purple. Purple you're gonna, means you're going to be... play with little penises. <laughs> a good portion of your life. You are on one today. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Everything you say is wildly inappropriate or completely off the rails. I love it. I don't know what's going I'm on. I'm just here. I'm just serving them up. It's batting practice. I'm just serving them. You're just hitting them out. Fucking boom. Asteroid up Boom. Play with little dicks. Pow. Pedophilia. Like, whatever. Let's do it. What's your stance on moving towns once you get caught being a pedophile? We have the job for you. <laughs> Do you like bouncing around the Northeast? <laughs> are you Join the clergy. Are you interested in seeing the main foliage turn this year and experiencing the beautiful, the beautiful Boston on the Charles River? <laughs> oh, Holy man. Shit. When things go awry, we've got a, a job for you in Vatican City, a city made of gold. <laughs> You get caught fucking a kid, you get a promotion. You we ever, bring you into the inner circle. You ever pooped on a gold toilet? <laughs> Fuck 15 kids again. <laughs> Holy shit. This honestly feels like this feels like written material. This feels like John's doing an hour-long special. This is incredible. This is maybe this is your perfect game. You are on one. Goodness. Unbelievable. Oh, how much pressure do you think there is to piss in a gold toilet? <laughs> it's like, you, you lift the seat up or not? Because I'm not a seat lifter upper. I fucking just I, wipe it when I'm done. Yeah. I make more problems for the future. Definitely. Rather than just solve it right there. I, I don't know if I could piss on gold. 
I think I, I, think I, I, I can could... piss on gold. I don't think I can shit on it. <laughs> you don't think so? Yeah, no. <laughs> I also, for some reason, I'm picturing it not having a lot of water. It's almost like you're just peeing and shitting into like uh, the gold like, itself. Like you shit when you shit in like a uh, airplane. Yeah, you hear a thud. It's all, that, 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 that thwop. It's Sounds like, like oh. someone just just dropped a Chipotle burrito on the desk. <laughs> you are taking some shits on an airplane, bro. You drop a Chipotle burrito on a desk. That thing, that thing rattles. <laughs> yeah, I think that sounds like fucking Cardi B dropping a baby. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Speaking of Cardi B and female rappers, uh, Megan Thee Stallion, she got shot not too long ago. Tory Lanez was the culprit after much, uh, a much, uh, there was a hubbaloo uh, about, you know, what happened and what went on. Uh, eventually, it just came to light that he was mad at her. They were in a fight and he fucking shot her in the foot a bunch. And now he, he's finally, like, addressing it. He just said he's sorry. He said he's sorry. I was just drunk. Nope, no, no real apology. Just like, my bad, I was drunk. Which, no, like, here's how I'm going to fix that problem no. in the future. But I also, I appreciate, you know, usually it's like, uh, I'm going to go to counseling or like, I'm, uh, uh, you know, this is a problem I've had for a while and I'm, a, uh, my behavior's unacceptable and I'm going to address it. Just like, I was drunk. I'm not now. I won't shoot anybody again. Right. And and, 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 and if I do, I'll shoot him in the foot. Who gives it? You can get away with it. Oh, sorry, I was drunk. Apology for, for the, the foot. foot. It's like uh, like sending a text message. Like, sorry, I was I was yeah, drunk. Yeah. But if I fucking fucked you, I'm sorry, I was drunk. Doesn't really count. No, no. But no. If, I, if I send a stupid text, like whatever. Yeah. But if I fucked you, sorry, I was drunk. Well, I don't know. What probably, about, you can probably get away with it shot, there too. What, uh, shoot you in the calf. What about that? Nah, it's good. Lower leg. lower body, you're pretty much. Uh, no, no, no. Below, below the knee, below the below, below the knee. The knee you shoot in the leg, femoral. You're, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. And you know, general ge genital area and stuff. And then anything upper body, you know, you certainly can't get away with the drunk apology. I could but, uh, even arms. I'll go arms. You can extremities. Okay, yeah. extremities. Except for that fucking dude, that Antifa dude, who like just his whole bicep was gone. That wasn't. That, that wasn't great. I didn't see that. But. The fucking what's his name, Rittenhouse or whatever. Yeah. I think the guy he shot, I think he just blew off like his whole bicep. So I don't care for that. Anything no. below the knees and elbows. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Yeah. Bang to bang, shabang, shaboom. I'm okay with that. I, but really, though, you have to honor in any whatever. Like, you don't have to really forgive the person. You can't be like, sorry, I raped you. Sorry, I killed you. Ooh. But, yeah, like, there's extreme things that you're not going to get the apology acceptance for. But I think you you do have to respect the I was drunk, I'm sorry. That plays. It, it, it might not, you know, again, you don't have to accept it. It might not be good, but it's like, it's better than a lie. If I said to you, why did you do that? It's like, I was drunk. Yeah. I, I was out of control. That's better to me than like, uh, you know, I like have issues and a moment of weakness or whatever. It's like, I was impaired. I was, in, I was intoxicated and I'm sorry for it. And I also think it's such like a... Uh, um, I feel like it's like a college trope, maybe, where it's like drunk words or sober thoughts. Yeah. No, they're not. Nah. Most well, of the drunk shit I say is bullshit. In, uh, I think in some instances it is, but like, uh, like I don't want to shoot I shot you. you is right. like I was I out of control. Shoot you. Yeah. That wasn't. So if I'm drunk and I'm like, I, I've secretly been in love with you for ten years, and I like, you know, uh, we, I don't want to be more than friends. There's probably Oof, some truth. To that. I'm bad about over four on that one. <laughs> 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 Never works. I have Never works. I have hit that line a few times to really <laughs> no what, response. What do they say? Like, why'd you walk me down to the river to tell me this? <laughs> wow. That it is, all makes that so is much sense. Too specific to be made up. <laughs> when you hear these things about John, it all makes perfect sense. If that happened to you one time, if you walk a girl down to a river and you say, I've I've been in love with you. I only you, did the river once. It was like, hey, you want to go for a walk? All right, I, 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 did you do the river the first time? No. Did you do the river uh, the second time, the third time, the no, fourth time? No, river was probably third. One was, I mean, they weren't all drunk either. One was just sober. One was like AIM, like taped it, typed it out fucking hard, mm. big time, long you paragraph. The, you, you press enter, and you hear the no, door No, it didn't even give me the respect of leaving. Just wow. stayed online, didn't respond to it. <laughs> she just she just minimized the box <laughs> and went on ASL sexting the guy she actually liked. Yeah, didn't even fuck like at least be like, oh, I didn't even see that. I, I just I'd signed off like it was the timing was off. Nah, I just stayed online, just chit chatting with the gals, the guys. <laughs> the, probably, the, probably, the, it was probably other guys that she actually wanted to give guys. a hand job to. Yeah. So then you do it again. Mm -hmm. I can respect the third time being like, well, I got to do this. Like, all right, we're going to the river. 
but the fourth time. Now, down, I honestly, I, I just threw out over four. I do think it was probably just three. three. Yeah. Okay, I would hope. You I can, I can, three. I can. Look, there, there definitely could have been other ones. I could definitively think of three, and none of them ever uh, reciprocated anyway. Not bad sex with all of them. Hey! <laughs> Shabuya, Shabuya, uh, Babuya, were, Babuya, roll fucking, call. Shabuya, 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 roll call. Like yeah. the, maybe we're not in love, but I'm rolling that it, body. It, none of it was ever until years later when I <laughs> got a hot no. <laughs> like, no, no, they just they like they, lowered their standards. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't the fucking black swan who like got beautiful. No, definitely it was, not. It was, if anything, if anything you're ugly. going ugly duckling. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the ugly You were a black swan, now you're an ugly white duck. <laughs> That's really what you are. John, you're an ugly duck. Like a white, like round, feathery duck. With a big beak. Yeah, you got a big beak, you're pale as fuck. Not right now, but usually you'll be pale as fuck. Yeah, give it a, give it a, give it a couple like... hours. By the time this podcast is done, I'll be translucent again. <laughs> Boy, that that between that and the breakup story where you chug the beer all over your face, I mean, it's a miracle you're not more fucked up. It all makes sense why you are as fucked up as you are, but it's a miracle you're not more fucked up. Yeah. Between the, the heartbreak, the crazy girls, the breakups, I mean, you should be... A serial killer. You should be addicted to cocaine and a serial killer for all of your exploits. I should exploits. be American Psycho. You really should. You I look should good be in a suit. I might think about it. Thank God you are the most just like go with the flow, indifferent guy. Otherwise, all of these things would you legitimately should have been, could have been, and would have been a school shooter. No, I've never. Yes. I've never held a gun. I have no. No, I, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about. The mentality that's going on in your head, all the things you went through, all adds up to I'm going to shoot this school up. I liked my school, though. I liked the people in it. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God. Otherwise, you would have went Rittenhouse on them. Dude, dude, between you and my therapist yesterday, I'm getting a lot of, it all makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that was most of yesterday's is uh, that not a, uh, session. I think that's, um, uh, like, a good, I think that's, like, um, What's the word? I was going to say satisfying. Not satisfying. Like, relief. It's, I think it's a relief. I don't care. No? No, I told her as much. I'm, I, I don't need to know why I am the way I am. But then, but then I don't have that engineering brain. But don't, but don't you think it can uh, then lead to fixing it? Like, if a therapist is like, I don't know what's going on here, <laughs> then they don't even have a path to, to take to fix it. Yeah, I'm sure it's but, good. But, you know, next her. session, she's going to be like, all right, for people who went through this and are fucked up like this, now that I know what's going on, we do this. Yeah, I guess. We'll see. And the answer is just pharmaceuticals. <laughs> so just, just just, to numb the activity up here. That's all it comes I've down to. I've told her no drugs, so I'm just going to keep wasting away my money. I was going to say, so she's probably like, okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to cash this fucking check. I know the answer. He doesn't want to hear it. It's like my lawyer when I told him to not play hardball with a divorce. Well, you're going to lose that. <laughs> well, we're not going to fix this mental health problem then, pal. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anywho... Gender Any, reveals. Anybody, we're, we're back in on no, gender no, reveals. No, no, no. We we've changed no, topics. What do we do? We're on Megan Thee Stallion. Now. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, don't shoot people. But if you do, say sorry because you were drunk. Yeah, if you're drunk, it happens. <laughs> All right. So then it's time to get into Am I the Asshole? It's brought to you by our girl, Erica Fleischman. Oh, shit. Her husband, Lee Fleischman. I got to go see you, girl. And Fleischman Salon. Uh, I just said the other day that I would hide a body for you, and I mean it. I would create a body for you. I will kill someone for Fleischman Salon. Because Erica reached out in 2013 and was like, dude, you're ugly and you're getting married. We got to fix that. She told me to grow my hair out. She, she fixed my hair. She taught me how to do my hair. And then all these years later, she comes full circle and she becomes an actual sponsor of our shows at Friday Night Pints. She's talking about doing One Minute Man uh, and been on, on KC Radio for a long time here. She has she cuts the hair of many bloggers. She has given advice to many of our listeners and our followers. Uh, she is now, she listens when everyone said, like, I want the Fleischman salon effect, but I don't live in New York, so what do I do? So what she do? She made a line of hair care products. Which so, I cannot speak highly enough about. I know, they really it's, are it's the, very The shampoo legit. and the conditioner are a bubble bath for your head. That's mm -hmm. just straight up what it is. Great it's marketing. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's it's suds. It's SS. SS. Oh boy, suds like a son uh, too much. It suds like a son of a bitch. <laughs> I was gonna try and shorten it, but I ran out no, of. No, suds like a son space. of a bitch is is great. Yeah, it's great like marketing. A, yeah, it's it does. It, it, uh, it's it, it gets like th there's like a thickness to when you're when you're just stop, just stop. S L A S O B. 
Mean, no, Su- that's a lot harder than saying sounds like a slob. Bitch. S- slob. It's a slob. Uh, just Eric, just stick with damn good haircuts. All right. <laughs> it, it gets this like thickness when you start lathering it up. That feels it goes like it feels like, it's like wop for your hair. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's yeah, macaroni in a pot. In a pot. Yeah. Got that 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 sudsy ass hair. Uh, it's it's uh, the the hair Sa. paste. I did the hair paste. <laughs> just stop it. <laughs> the hair the hair cream and paste. It does this thing. I did it on Friday Night Pines too. Like my hair will be a mess, right? And then I like get on my hair and I just kind of do like a shoom, and it just like it just takes control. It's of it. like it's like the general walks into the building. Everybody Attention! Up. Everyone's, Everyone's like, fucking yup. ready to go. It works and it stays. And that's why if you put a little sea salt spray in your hair, the sea salt the sea salt's gonna be big in the coming months because there's no more ocean. Well, I didn't realize too, by the way. Well, it's still an ocean, it's, but you're it's, probably it's, not gonna swim in it. I know it's sea salt, and I was like, okay, this this mimics like your hair at the beach. But I haven't been to the beach in a long time. I went to the beach the other day, and I got out of the ocean, and I came out, and I was like, shit, it's like exactly when I use the sea salt spray. Because it is just salt water. I get it. <laughs> but it really does mimic that uh, when you walk off the beach sort of vibe. Gets a little grittiness to it. A little yeah, grittiness. Yes. You get that like kind of that like TikTok-y hair going <laughs> yeah. where it's all flopping and, and, and flowing. Uh, so you can get all these hair care products we're talking about right now when you go to FleischmannSalon.com. And you use the promo code KFC, you get twenty percent off. And then if you do, um, uh, if you subscribe, you'll get an additional ten percent off. Uh, so go to Fleischman F L E I S C H M A N. I'll do it one more time for you, F L E I, because you know, listen, New York City, we got we got our New York City Jews. She's got she is she is a Jewish queen. She she is she's she's. For us, it's like Fleischman. We get it. You live in like I don't know Iowa. You're like I've never. I don't know how to spell that. I don't know these names. F L E I S C H M A N dot com, uh, salon dot com, and use the promo code KFC. Get the entire hair care line for twenty percent off. Then you get the subscription. Get it sent to you uh, regularly. I on don't a monthly even know basis. which one to recommend. Like if, if like you only had to get one, I. Th- uh, that's a good question. I think at the end of the day. The most important thing. The sea salt spray is a nice extra, and it's the most unique thing. So if you want to go for something like that, fine. The shampoo and conditioner is going to give you the smell, which I think is really important. It's all got the smell, though. Yeah, but the, but the shampoo and conditioner, you're getting it in there. I think at the end of the day, though, the hair, I use the hair paste, but the hair cream, too. The hair cream comes in the bottle, and I think you can just use it for like a little touch-up. But the hair paste is what's going to give you the like the look. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, the look's what matters. It can look it can look shiny because of the shampoo. That's good. It can smell good, girls and guys. Everyone's gonna love that. The sea salt spray is gonna be something like, oh, you don't use sea salt spray, <laughs> you fucking po bitch. <laughs> but to me, you need to get the look, and that's why the paste is the main, the main uh, attraction, if you ask me. So but get it all. Just fucking get it all. It's 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 very it's, affordable. You get a huge it, discount. It's get one it of these things. I I mean, same thing with with when you go to her salon to get a haircut. It's like. Your hair is attached to your head, to your face. Make sure you get all of it. None of it's expensive, but spend the money to get everything. It's like you would buy, you'd spend more on a shirt that you wear, like, I don't know, every couple of weeks. You'd once probably a month. spend more on a shirt than all of this stuff combined. Absolutely. And then you would wear it maybe, you know, once a month or whatever, or you get it, you rip it, you get a stain on it, you just throw it out, you lose it. This is every day, bro. <laughs> so do yourself a favor, look good. Uh, and, and get your confidence up. Get the Fleischman different. Oh, and the hair gummies. The hair gummies might be the most important thing. Because uh, if you yeah. ain't got hair to style, who fucking cares? The gummies helps the hair grow. Get all of it. Go to FleischmannSalon.com, uh, promo code KFC, and get... Sorry, go to FleischmannSalon.com slash shop. If you don't want to do the whole URL, though, right at the top it says shop. Just click it. And use promo code KFC for 20% off. Am I the asshole? We got a couple doozies for you motherfuckers, for everybody out there who... Basically, is an asshole. Uh, we will begin with. I'm 36 male. I'm, I'm going to build up in my mind. I'm thinking. Um, okay, this guy is an asshole. This guy is the bigger asshole. This is the most diabolical. All right. 36 year old male. I catfished my wife, 37, by pretending to be Jason Matsukas. Jason Matsukas. Raffy, Raffy from the Raffy. off okay. uh, from the league. So, sure. We've had him on the show before. Great guy, funny cat. The title makes me sound like a terrible person. I don't. Uh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I mean, it sounds it's a little weird, a little suspect, but terrible person in today's world. 
Terrible people are like shooting your bicep off and stuff. Like, relax. Don't be so hard on yourself. My wife and I were joking around about our celebrity cr- Oh, maybe. Okay, now I see where this is going. You maybe are a horrible person. Uh, joking around about our celebrity crushes and our hall pass celebrities. Mine was Beyonce, who I'm obviously never going to meet. Hers was Jason Matsukas. Listen, I love Jay. Girls, we got to aim a little higher. I mean. If he's picking Beyonce, you got to pick, you know, Brad Pitt, Leo DiCaprio, Ryan Reynolds. Jason Matsuka has great sense of humor, but that's not what the Hall no, Pass is No, I about. respect her move here. You think it's attainable? It's attainable. Well, we'll find out exactly why this is a problem, though. Uh, um, I was like, that's weird. I would expect Hemsworth or something like that. That's what I said. But then she was like, yeah, we went to the same college. Oh, boy, this is going to get really bad. Okay, you are a bad person. Uh, same college, Middlebury, but 10 years apart. She said that whenever events open up again, she might go to a re- reunion and meet Jason Matsukas. So now she's an asshole, too, because she is telling she's you, just like, I, I picked I, a person that I'm going to find yeah, and fuck. Yeah, like, I will I will see this man at a bar yeah. shortly. That's like just being like, who's my you know hall pass? It's like, that girl right over there yeah. at the bar. <laughs> see you later. I couldn't tell if she was kidding, and this is starting to feel a little too real. I created a fake Middlebury alum email address and emailed her about a new program for Middlebury alums to mentor each other. I told her she was assigned to Jason Matsukas. She was thrilled, and so I've been exchanging emails with her. This is crazy. With her as Jason Matsukas. I was incredibly sad to see how flir- how flirtatious it got fast. My wife isn't really very... My wife isn't really very sexually active. I thought it said attractive. I was like, well, boy, everyone's a dick. My wife is really not very sexually active with me. So lust got the better of me. I've been sending her headless nudes of some hairy looking guy I found on Google. And she's been sending nudes back. So she's kind of having an affair. I know this sounds insane, but I kind of want to go with it. As is this the most sexual I've been with my wife in a while? I just spit everywhere. Heavens. It, it's a bit oh, soul crushing, though. Because I'm pretending to be Jason Matsukas. Is it absolutely necessary I fess up? I got to apologize to the audience. I said I was going to try to build up. <laughs> I did not know it was going to go there. This would clearly have been the gold medal. <laughs> uh, we're on the we're in the bronze right now, but this is insanity. This is yo. The, I got. I, I don't care if you're the asshole or not. Whatever. I'm not here to t- go kill yourself right now. <laughs> so if the most sexually active you've been with your wife in years is pretending to be Jason Manzukas while she sends back pictures of her finger fucking herself, you got another thing coming. John? You gotta you gotta fix that. John. I've been there, bro. <laughs> Wait. Like, like not I, I have been in a place where if this was occurring, it would have been the most action okay, I was getting. Okay. I've never done it. I'm just <laughs> okay, saying yeah. when you I thought are, we had a big reveal coming. No. <laughs> Imagine it's like, it's me. This is a personal story. I was in a situation. I'll tell you this much. I wish I handled it this way instead of the way I did. Probably would have been a a fight and an awkward conversation, but awkward aversion led me down a much worse path. But I, I know it sounds crazy, but I can sympathize. I don't I'm not going to say I get it, but I can sympathize when you are in a drought like that for a long, pro- for a prolonged period of time and there's no end in sight. You know, I was just like, well, this is it's going to be like this forever. Uh, you maybe start sexting as Jason Mantzoukas <laughs> to Google. I mean, that guy probably Googled like hairy, headless, Indian naked. man. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what Mantzoukas is. But yeah, that, that's got, close enough. It seems yeah. like he's that, got that kind of It would look of like that. This is either... The most flattering. No, it's definitely Greek. It's Mantzoukas. Mantzoukas, Yeah, Yeah, I should have figured that one out. Mediterranean, let's do. Uh, This is either the most flattering or disrespectful thing that's ever happened to Jason (laughs) Mantzoukas. I can't tell. We'll have to add him on this one. Maybe we'll get his his response. Um, I mean, first of all, everyone's the asshole. Like, she is... You, know. you can't pick it, it, when, but, but when it we're was doing hall fucking pass. hall pass. No, hall pass is like uh, my fucking hall pass is President Barack Obama. Like I, <laughs> <laughs> like there's, there's my hall pass is the asteroid one nine six two three. It's gonna go on my ass. <laughs> like you can't have a hall an attainable hall pass. That yeah. takes away all the fun of a hall pass. I, I agree, but in the in the in in within the rules of the game, she picked that as her hall pass. He said that's a little weird, but he agreed to it, and so technically. She's be, she is an asshole, but she's technically with playing within the rules of Hall Pass. Yeah, I mean, he she should, is. what he should have said was what you just said. Like, no, that's too attainable. Pick someone else. But he agreed to it. That's President a binding Barack Hall Obama, Pass. Probably that's a binding <laughs> Hall Pass agreement. And so now technically she's not breaking any rules, whereas you are being a psychopathic liar. I mean, you're like you're the asshole, bro. Like you're the huge asshole here. She's an asshole. This is a the, she, ETA. 
Everyone's the asshole? Yeah. ETH, everyone's the asshole here? Yeah. Yeah, this is everyone's the asshole here. This girl has, like, an asshole... And he's Belladonna. Yeah. Like, just, you can see, in, I feel like with Belladonna, you could look in there and see, like, her spinal cord. Like, you could see, like, her vertebrae through that. So, uh, but I'll tell you, in all seriousness, you need to just get a divorce. Because either you tell her the truth, and that's... You you might say that you can work through this. You can't work through being catfish as Jason Matsukas. Yeah, that's or, that's like the fucking uh, the pina colada song in real life. Yeah, okay, bro, that's not how it goes. No, you don't fucking both create Match. dot com accounts and then see each other. And be like, oh my god, I didn't know you like pina coladas. Let's fuck again. No, no, it's 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 over. No, it's, it's a total. Over. It's a wrap. Or you keep it a secret and then that just eats at you. Yeah. And you just every time you, you look at the her, suicide you're like, that I started with. Yeah. yeah so either way. So I would say break up with them, or you, or you're gonna kill yourself. Or pick one, whichever one you, whichever one sounds more appealing. Divorce or suicide. <laughs> that is, that might be the wildest one we've ever done. It's, it's crazy. I, I it's crazy. I'd you, also you, love wait, to read these wait emails. A minute. You think that this is one of those fake ones, though? I just thought of that. Why? Because I mean, it's that far fetched. It's awesome, though. No, I think I, I, I don't believe in something, man. I don't, yeah. I don't do that fake stuff story, fake story stuff. Okay. I, I, fuck it. It's real, man. It's real to me. All right. It's still real to me, damn it. A, a truth that brings a smile, a lie, a truth, a, a, a lie that brings a smile or a truth that brings a tear. The hell's that? It's a fucking phrase, bro. Just think about it. Stupid. It's a lie that brings a tear or a truth. Fuck. It's a truth that brings a tear or a lie that brings a smile. It's Santa Claus, Miracle on 34th Street. Sounds stupid. It do, it's, it's literally exactly what you just said. Believe no. in it. Believe in it because it makes you happy versus telling the truth and being sad. Nah. <laughs> that, you just tried, you you were coming up with these stupid acronyms <laughs> and dumb <laughs> phrases that were too hard to say versus this one just it perfectly captures what you're trying to say. Don't ruin an entertaining story with the truth. How about that? That's harder to say no, it's not. than a truth that brings a tear oh, oh, or a yeah, lie that brings a you smile. You over this five well, times. Well, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I, I, I'm just looking through the comments here to see if anybody, uh, you know what? Somebody, I don't like, I don't like the people who comment about, am I the asshole? They always say things like this for fuck's sake. Why can't people just speak to their partners? Why don't you just speak up? Uh, cause it's the hardest thing in the world. Yeah. It is literally when, once you, yes, perfect in a perfect world, every single time something comes up, you should bring it up, nip it in the bud and grow and the relationship be happy. Once you've reached this point where it's like, we haven't fucked in so long and I feel rejected, but I don't want to bring it up because it's awkward and I kind of resent you for it. Why don't you want to fuck me? I'm sure you feel the same way, but you won't say that. I mean, that's a, not an easy thing to just be like, why don't you speak up? It's not just like, oh, I wanted pizza for dinner instead of Chinese food. We're talking about like deep issues where you're talking about someone's personality flaws and shit yeah, like this that. Is, you know? This is the person who I've spent my entire life being as perfect as possible in front of and now I have to show them weakness. Not really what I've been practicing. Right. I've been I've been putting on a front so that she likes me for the longest time since day one, and now all of a sudden I have to be myself. Yeah, sure. That's easy to say. It's not easy to do. Possible to do. Fuck off. All right. Next time I the asshole. I promise the other ones are good too, though. They're just not as good as that. This guy sucks so much. So much. Am I the asshole for getting angry with my girlfriend? Am I the asshole? For getting angry, my girlfriend is wasting my power words on her friends. Excuse me? Yes. 30-year-old male. I've been dating my girlfriend, Jean, 21, for about a year now. Now, that 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 matters. 30-year-old 30, 30 male, 21-year-old female. It gets even more pathetic because of that. Part of what I love about her most is that she's so supportive of me. I'm stuck in a dead-end job, really unhappy with where I am at life currently. So getting to hear her talk me up and tell me how awesome I'm doing is probably one of the few things that actually gets me through the day, which is great. I, you know, that's, that's awesome. When she tells me I'm great, I call those power words because knowing someone as hot, successful, and cool as she thinks uh, uh, and, and that she thinks I'm doing good really gets me fired up. Recently, we got together with a Zoom meeting with some of our friends. One of our friends, Trish, was mentioning that she was nervous for a driving exam, which is like you're hanging out with like children, bro. <laughs> so Jean was trying to reassure her, which would be fine, except she was using the exact same phrasing she uses when she's powering me up. 
I got really upset and stayed quiet for the rest of the movie. When she asked what was wrong, I told her the truth. I feel like she shouldn't be wasting my power words on other people. I need the most. And when she says things like, oh, I think you're the most incredible guy ever, and then goes and tells her friend that she thinks she's incredible, it's really disheartening. It makes me feel like nothing she says is real. I've got a big project at work coming up, and now I can't get hype because I know whatever she tells me is meaningless. I just feel like I'm really hurt by her saying platitudes that were meaningless, so I feel betrayed. If you have a phrase for power words, don't tell me you agree with this. Oh, no. Oh, okay. No, you paused no. for a second, and I was like, don't do no, it to no, me. No, no. Don't you do it to me. No, of course not. I, I think maybe if I were someone, I would just date someone with a larger vocabulary. Maybe maybe say. date an adult with someone who knows words but from incredible and More great. importantly, though, I don't know. Yeah, your girl's not a fucking thesaurus, and you don't own words, man. You can be incredible to your girlfriend, and so can like the macaroni and cheese she ate for dinner. The, this you do not own words, and uh, you're, Louis C.K. has a bit about that. Yeah, where he <clears throat> he was like at dinner, and he hated how like he heard young people like describing a burger as awesome. He's like, really? That inspired <laughs> awe. That's like he's like. That, so what are you gonna do when God comes down? What, is, what are you gonna say you about that? You wasted it on a burger, right? I don't get, like, <clears throat> it's all awesome. Power words. It's all yeah, awesome, baby. It's all incredible. It's all great, bro. When I fucking hit a green light. That's fucking awesome. awesome. Amazing. When I get a blowjob, awesome. awesome. When I do great at work, awesome. It's so, so they all mean the same thing. They mm -hmm. all get me the same exact little excited. Honestly, is, everything you which just is described. Which a tidchip of zero. Everything you just described, the green light's the best. Yeah. When you're, when you're driving to Manhattan, too, and you get those greens, oh, baby. Oh, man. I mean, literally, forget about the blowjob. I will come from that. When you when it just goes, like, tick, 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 and, you, and you time it, you're driving... If you're on the West Side Highway, you got to drive about like 30, like eight miles per hour. Because if you go too fast, you got to do the stop yeah. and then go. You got to time it right, and then you just breeze, baby. You feel and like I you're in a fucking right in my pants. like a uh, fucking futuristic video game because you're like you're really kind of encapsulated by the buildings. Yeah, but you're also on this fucking runway, and it's fucking amazing. I don't, I don't, I obviously don't experience it much. I just, I recently had a car in the city for like a week. Um, or we're going down like Fifth Avenue. Like it's one thing on the high, like West Side Highway, the East Side. East Side there's not any lights, but when you're on like Fifth Avenue or any of these avenues, and you're just, it's amazing. And then when there's sometimes awesome. you, like there's a rant, you'll have a string of greens and then one red and then more greens ahead of it. And it's like, what's this red doing here? Makes you want to just blow right I through. I just run that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've never done that. <laughs> just trying to sound cool. Uh, using a power word. Uh, um, <laughs> the uh, th this guy though, I mean, for 21 year old girl. To be like, even first of all, to even really be relying on her. I mean, it is, I can relate in the sense, I had a girl who, like, was very complimentary of me, like, in bed and the way I looked and shit that I was like, You're faking come it. on. <laughs> but it did, like, really seem genuine, and I was kind of like, ah, this chick is like, she really thinks, like, I'd be like, ah, I am, like, skinny, fat, and gross. And she'd be like, no, she wouldn't be like, you're fucking, like, your body's hot, but she'd be like, you're totally fine, you know what I mean? And, but God, then I had that bar right on the ground, but, huh? But, <laughs> like, like all, yeah, she was gassing me up. She'd be like, "You're totally fine." Yeah. <laughs> I, felt like, I felt like a fucking king when I walked out of there. <laughs> but then she would tell me, "Have you ever had this where it's like, all right, you know that that girl thinks you're hot, but then she tells me like a celebrity or someone else that she thinks is good looking, and I'm like, oh well, then that negates like everything." What do you mean? Like she, I, I can't, I don't remember who exactly, but like. She she would say a celebrity that I think is like gross is hot, and then I was like, well, now I'm rethinking everything. You you think I'm as hot as that ugly celebrity? Right. No thanks. Exactly. Where I was like, if you th if you find that attractive, then your like baseline here is way off. <laughs> so I can't take it. <laughs> well, I, I to think say. that's like a genuine taste. She just has weird taste. She likes she likes funny looking people. That's what I mean. Yeah. I'm yeah. funny looking. But it's like, it's just the- No, no, I'm not saying that she, like, I don't she believe her. I'm saying that I, I convinced myself I was good looking because this hot chick said nice things about me. But then she also said that about, like, this, like, kind of, like, fat, like, celebrity or some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wish I could remember who. I'm trying to think of who it was where I was like, that guy? <laughs> you think he's hot? And then, so me and him are in the same boat. That's the ugly boat. <laughs> you just have thinking, you just think that hot people are ugly people are hot. That's your you, problem. You just dropped on your head as a kid. That's all. Yeah, I'm you're here. just backwards. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you know what hot means? Do you know what ugly means? Maybe you're just backwards. Yeah, here. have you heard of symmetry? What's your deal? What's wrong, what's wrong with you? But the, but, but, but there is, is, there is nice, it is nice to get gassed up. Yeah, and that, that part Obviously. of it is really is, like, that part, I actually think that the, that is a important part of a relationship. I don't know if I I'd like getting gassed up. For, like, a 21-year-old probably has the, like, 
the most energy to gas you up because they don't have their own shit going on. But if a 21 year old was gassing me up, I'd be like, shut the fuck up and go watch Rocket yes. Power. Agreed. It's got to come from the right. <laughs> it's got to come from the right. Pro- so my buddy, uh, his wife uh, was a. You don't even know what you're talking about, you idiot. <laughs> yeah, you're just dumb. Right. You, like, you, I appreciate the you have the but energy you're dumb. Just to give me the words. Yeah. I don't have the respect for you to listen to them. <laughs> like, you don't even. That's really that. You don't even know what great is, you fucking idiot. That really. Go, you have a Zoom class. Go. When you when you date young, that's really what it's all about. You have energy, but I don't have respect for you. <laughs> like, you have the energy, and I have the like stability, uh, but I don't have respect for you, and you don't think I'm cool. Like that's really how young and old relationships work. My buddy's wife uh, was an officiant at a wedding recently. And um, she is getting requests from like other people to do their weddings now. And he told me that that she was like, like, can you believe this? And he was like, I, no, I can't. I mean, like, you did all right. Like, wasn't anything special. <laughs> it's like, God say, yeah. damn. I mean, you made solid contact, but you didn't hit it out of the park. Right. You know? <laughs> and, and and he was like, and, and this is I long for this. This is like they're my gold standard relationship. If I could have a marriage like these two, I would because. He was, just, you know, it was like she was like, yeah, you're right. Like it was, like, it was, over. I was okay. Like there wasn't like I can't believe you said that. She didn't go and make an "Am I the asshole?" post. She was just like, yeah, you told me the truth. <laughs> I, I was okay at it. Uh, but, but power words, man. Power words. If you really need them from your 21 year old girlfriend, you got bigger problems, you know. Last "Am I the asshole?" here. This is the doozy. This is more of the the Reddit relationship, not the "Am I the asshole?" Me, 20 year old male, and my friend, 23 year old male. Think our girlfriends might be the same person. Now, I can't understand if this means like they think they're dating the same girl or if there's like two separate girls and they're just very similar. How it's are you? Gotta be the same girl. Gotta same girl. Yeah. A little context I'm 20, 20, he's 23. My girlfriend is 19. Uh, oh, no. So it's two different people. My girlfriend is Paige, his girlfriend's Maya. All this takes place in an online Discord. Same person. Okay. All right. Where we all became friends. Kevin introduced me to Discord. I introduced Maya. Maya introduced Paige. Kevin and and Maya started dating before I started talking to Paige. A few months later, Paige and I started dating. Paige and Maya look similar, have a similar household, and share more similarities than that. That's got to be something about, like, their pussy or something, right? (laughs) (laughs) A month or two ago, Paige and Maya both got their phone taken away at the same time for the same duration. Me and Kevin had a chat about it since we were both pretty much in the same boat, and we realized they had a lot more in common than we thought. We both laughed it off. Recently, in the last six weeks, Kevin's girlfriend, Maya, stopped talking to him as much, so him and other mutual friends started digging into the personal information. Turns out that they might be the same person. And to uh, to confirm it, they asked me for some pictures of Paige. Aside from them looking very similar, there were a large amount of similarities. So let's see. The paint on the wall, the placement of the door, the stepladder near the doorway, and a painting over the bed. What more do you need than I that? I mean, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. Were you another a DNA set of, test? Another Are you set a of fucking pictures. CSI jury? Like, oh, no, wait, where's the blood? Where's the evidence? What are you talking about, bro? Yeah, we're not in a court of law to, like, prove a murder here. All, you, all I needed was the stepladder. You got a stepladder in your bedroom? Same person. You both have it? You white, you Ben Affleck. You got a stepladder, you page. Uh, another set of pictures, same sink material, hooks over the door, towel rack across from the sink, same phone case. I sent a voice recording of Paige. He said it sounds like Maya. They both have similar voice habits, like an open mic, screaming what to their parents, clearing their throat in the middle of singing. One of the strangest aspects is that Maya had a profile of some girl from Instagram, not very popular, but a good 1.5 thousand followers. Maya claims to not have fi- Facebook or follow. I mean, this is going on and on. Uh, Paige has been a stream. Okay, so I guess they, 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 so I go to confront Paige about it, but she vehemently denies it. But she says that she and Maya used to have a small thing between them. So Maya has some pictures of Paige that were sent to Kevin. Well, I mean, to try to spin your way out of that lie, to not just be like, <laughs> hand up, I'm caught. I respect to be like, that. Yeah, Sorry, I used to eat pussy. Going down with this. Yeah. <laughs> I used to date her. I had pictures of her. That's why we had it on the phone. Kevin. Kevin's perspective is extremely convincing, and there's a mountain of evidence against them. I've received a lot more pictures. Paige has been extremely apologetic, trying to convince us that she's just as confused as we are, and she's scared of what's happening. I don't know how to process all this. The two conclusions I was able to draw were that either Mage and Pi- Paige and Maya are the same person, or that Maya is a catfish and was catfishing Paige at one point and then began to catfish Kevin afterwards. So obviously these are all people, this is all just online, right? You're yeah. Not, you're not meeting anybody. So you're all assholes. <laughs> all of them. I mean, you are so. Actually, the girl's not in my mind. 
She's just a catfish. She's just and she's a- playing two assholes. <laughs> and she got caught, and she's like, I can still talk my way out of this because you two are assholes. This is why I'm so lucky that I've never, like, never really been a big texter or... I guess I, I fucked with AIM for a while. Mm-hmm. But after that, I was never a big Facebook messenger, never an emailer, because like I just this trap's impossible for me to fall, fall into. Mm-hmm. I cannot have extensive conversations with you just texting. I don't care. Right. I don't care. Right. I will you do really something don't. else. I'm, I'm on the opposite will, of that. I can text all day and night long. Yeah. I, last night we te- last night was probably the longest we texted in a long time. Yeah. We had, we had a big text going last mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. and It was like five texts long. It, that's not a big text to you? No, that's what I mean. I mean, I, I'll have, I, can, I can go all night long. Dude, see, I, I was like, I actually, I, I got to the point where I was like apologizing because we were watching a show and I was like, sorry, I'm talking to Oh, Kevin. well, that's, yeah, I mean, if you're in, fr- I'm always alone, so I'm just like, eh, fuck <laughs> it, you know, I'll talk to you. Like, um, please, please text me, I'm all alone, please. <laughs> but like, I mean, it's just, just people who like fall in love with someone they're just text communicating with, I'll never understand it. I'll never you understand what, Catfish, I'll never understand like being heartbroken over like someone you used to text sometimes. Like, that, I can, yeah, that's I crazy. can form zero emotional connection with you if all we do is Oh, I can do that. I can do that. I think if you... I can't do the, like, um... The the last person I formed an emotional connection with via text was Big Cat on Gchat. (laughs) <laughs> it was like yeah, so but it long can before it, it can happen. Yeah, I, I guess like that's like I guess on Gchat but, we used to cut. But it up you all have the time. to know there's so. like a if you just meet them online or like a Discord or whatever, and you're prime for a catfish, then that's weird. But if it's like I I know you or like I've seen you, even though I've just like seen like your Instagram, like I have to know there's some sort of real human behind it. And then when I'm talking to you, I can. To me, that's like the same. I can have as much of a connection, like, talking to you as I am texting to you, as long as I've, like, maybe met you before or know there's some sort of... I can't be guessing. Like, See, are you a man? Are you a woman? Do I, you know, are you real? Are you the same person? If it's, like, you set me up with someone or something and then I'm texting them a lot, I could I could connect like that. See, I'm the exact... I, 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 it's actually... It probably has a connection to... or uh, Yeah, a connection to uh, school. Like, you could write all the shit in the world you want on the chalkboard. You could make me read all the shit in the world you wanted. I'm a visual learner. Mm. I gotta, I gotta be up in it. I gotta, I got You gotta have a fun lesson plan for me to even give a shit. What a pain in the ass I, you are! I, I can't just fucking sit there and read text and learn. It's just not gonna happen. I gotta fucking, yeah. I gotta get up in the guts. I gotta, I gotta hold your hand. I gotta feel your hair. I gotta. It's gotta be something real to me. Before I, I, I I'm, can understand that. You know what I think it is for me though. Like I moved when I was a kid a bunch. So like I met Jay Hay and my buddy Weez, and then I moved. And we did, like, aim. Like, I kept in touch with those guys for, like, I mean, we're still friends to this day, like, 20 fucking, like, seven years later. And a long time, it was just, like, aim and chat rooms and then eventually G-chat and shit. But it was, like, I knew them, and it was, like, my only way to really connect with them anymore was through the computer. And then I think that kind of, like, paved the way where it's, like, ah, I can do that with anybody at that point. Yeah. I mean, make, I, I think both of our, our histories make sense. Yours is more normal than mine. I, I, I don't know. Well, I guess, I guess, I guess judging we, by the world, how the world, well, yeah, people the I talk world to now are like, oh yeah, like all we do is text. I'm yeah, why? Like, yeah. I text my girlfriend five times a day. Maybe I know that's why you guys have a good relationship. Because <laughs> you know what the problem is when you start texting too much. If you don't text, it's like, well, what's going what, on? Yeah, are you? Are you it, can, it can get extreme. Like, are you cheating? But it's also just like, where are you? What's going? Is everything okay? And it's just like I just didn't want to text you right now. But it gets like suspicious, or it gets weird, or it just is like. Well, this is not what we usually do. It's like what well, we what we usually do. We set the bar too high. Right. Like, we can't possibly keep. I don't, this up. I don't have the energy to keep a conversation going all day. Yeah. Not for me. Yeah, but I also think that I think it all comes down to if you're comfortable being lonely too. If you're comfortable oh. by yourself, you won't need to do that. Whereas, like in recent years, I don't like being lonely, so I'm like, I'll text you, I'll talk to you, I'll like, I want like that happening. But if you like when I when I when I was not lonely, if I got chance a chance to be alone, it was like no phone, get away. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna watch TV. But now it's like I just want you know some sort of connection. So it's really it really always comes back to depression and mental health. <laughs> voicemail time. It's brought to you by Miller Lite. It's voicemails. It's the longest running interactive segment on Barstool Sports. This podcast has been built on our listeners and our callers and our followers. And uh, and so it's just like you guys are our friends. So when you're listening to voicemails or if you're calling up the line to leave us a voicemail, do it with a nice cold Miller Lite. Uh, it's the number one beer for, you know, when you're, when you're socializing, which is what we do here on the show. You know, we're not doing it live, but it's our 
friends, if you will, asking us questions and telling us stories, and we answer back, and we tell our own stories, and we do it all while uh, drinking some nice ice-cold Miller Lights. Whether you're at the house listening to the podcast or you're out at the bar, whether you are ordering it from a, a waitress or getting it delivered to your house, uh, either way, Miller Lite is the go-to beer for the best social. I got the socks on. What? Pretty, pretty cool socks. Oh, yeah, I got the hat, too. I put uh... it up here on the wall. <gasps> Did you steal it or did you give it to someone? I gave it to Carl. Carl. I saw him <laughs> wearing it. <laughs> he, he, I didn't know it was your. I had a feeling it was yours, to be totally honest. I didn't know. And he came to me and he's like, I will pay you anything for that hat. And I was like, actually, we have an extra one in the studio. I mean, it, I will say Carl is a worthy Miller Lite guy. So <laughs> he was like, he's like, uh, honestly. And then afterwards, so I got the socks here. Bam, light. That was funny. You were like, <laughs> as soon it was, as I turned around, you knew it was happening. I will, I will. I put it right next to our other hat on the Wall of Fame, which is the guy who like hiked up to the top of the mountain to get service to be able to listen to yeah. us because he loved us so much. Yeah. I put my Miller Lite there because it meant so much to me, and you just fucking gave it away. It was, it was like he, I, he was so. In love with he he uh, he was like it's a cool hat he was like it's I don't a really know. awesome it's an awesome hat I'm gonna John. get you a new one well I'm gonna get it to you for you from Miller I'm gonna get you a new one I promise you that but he was like I don't know he was like like genuinely he's like I don't know how I'm ever gonna repay you for this <laughs> and I was like it's not that a, dude loves I, Miller I was like, it's not a big deal he's like, he's like no I'm dead serious like do you want a firstborn named out like like what <laughs> I was like Paul man it's just it's a it's hat good. it's a great hat but it's yeah. a hat so. Oh, I am gonna get you another one. I I didn't. I knew it was gonna happen. Not twenty four hours ago did I give that hat away. <laughs> it was like, I turned around and it was gone. I was like, "Where'd it go?" <laughs> yeah, no, that was me. It's a great hat. The socks are cool too. So not only do they have good beer, but they got good swag. If you can get your hands on it, uh, the the hat is like a what kind of hat is that? That's the kind of hat I need. I don't know. You know, but it's like a different hat. It's like not like a it's not like a fitted cap like where it has like it's chunky kind of. It's a good hat. And it's good beer. And right now, if you go to MillerLite.com slash KFC, you can find all the delivery options near you. Please celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Well, just a question for you. It's driving me crazy. Um, 26, loves my fiance, just the two in the house. So because of that, we have like five plates. Okay, like, I don't know, same amount of bowls, shit ton of cups because everyone does. But my fiance refuses to run the dishwasher or let me run the dishwasher unless it is full. And so there are times when, you know, like whatever pan I want to use is dirty and so are so is every single plate we own. But she's like, no, you're going to waste water by running the dishwasher. And it's driving me crazy because I'm just like, I'm hand washing. What is the point of a dishwasher if I can't run it? And if we have to wait till it's full and it's just us two, it takes forever. It's driving me crazy. I need someone else's opinion on it. Or whether I'm an asshole and need to shut up I... or whether I should just... Start Not, running the dishwasher whenever I want. Not exaggerating, I would break up with this girl. I don't own enough dishes to make a full dishwasher. Yeah, I mean, that. You're, that's a great point. Um, I do have a bone to pick with him, though. Pans in the dishwasher. Not allowed. Why not? Nah, you fucking hand wash that shit like a fuck, like you're on the, the little home on the prairie. Why? Yeah. Why? Nah, you gotta get give me an answer. Gotta, Stop just saying yes. Yeah. Tell gotta, me why. You gotta get one of those fucking steel wools in there. Why? You, you uh, you're just it. saying things. Why? It's just how you get. It's just how it's done. No, it's yeah, not. Man. It's just how it's why? done. Why? Why? It's how things work in proper society. Why? It's no pans are done right away. Right as soon as you're done cooking, here's what you do. You fucking cook. Boom. Sink. Eat. Boom. Wash that. Boom. Dishwash a bang. Fucking start scrubbing the Stop with the onomatopoeias. <laughs> then you just start scrubbing right after that. No. And then and then it's done. Why not why not your right? cups? Why not your plates? Why not your your, your silverware? Because you have more of those. I mean, look, look, if you got a hundred thousand pans, fine. But if you got <laughs> but, but so stupid. <laughs> but you most of you only have like you know, one uh, big pot. saucepan, yeah. one big uh, pot. pot. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like so, and that might be needed again tomorrow. That you don't have time to put in the dishwasher. No, I mean, but, I run the dishwasher every night. Why? That's crazy town too. Just to have the clean dishes. But like, how many dishes are you going through a day? I don't care if there's one. First of all, let me tell you exactly what happens in my in my uh, bachelor pad. I don't even unload the dishwasher anymore. What the hell? You hit your funny bone. What happened? Oh my god, I'm falling apart. What just happened? <laughs> oh my god. What was that? For my for, if you're not watching, uh head over to Twitter and you can see a clip of this. But John, like he he like, I, like got he grabbed his elbow as if he got sniped or as if he hit a funny bone and he like flailed and, and he started no, to the, cry. That was the thing. That was a secondary move. I got a chill 
And then my arm snapped so bad, I like hyperextended my arm. And then when I pulled it up, I got a fucking, if I pull a muscle in my neck, I think. <laughs> Motherfucker got the goosebumps and he's on the DL now because of it. <laughs> Holy shit. You might be, you know how I always say that like adolescent, adolescent, like we crossed. Yeah. You might end up having a worse body than me too <laughs> in the, when it's all said and done, which I thought was impossible. But you can't even get the goosebumps without straining your neck. <laughs> I don't know, man. Chaos in the, in the Absolute studio. Absolute chaos. I could, I could never replicate that if I tried. No. Tell me about the bachelor pad. I, I, uh, I f- like put the dishes in the dishwasher. I run it. There's a couple dishes, full dish, full load, whatever. Then I just use that as like my cupboard. Like I don't put them in there. I just, That's lunacy. I just take the things out of it, and then so let's say I have, let's say I do accumulate a full load. I have all the dishes in there. I open it up. I take out. A plate, a cup, a a fork, and knife, right? Maybe you're over, so there's like two sets of that. Now I have like a few dishes that are dirty. I put those back in, and I just run the whole thing again. But you have so few dishes in there, it's so easy just to put them in the cupboard. Mm, I will, I mean, I get the kids' bottles. Like when I I empty the dishwasher at home, where like during COVID when there are like six of us there, and everyone's eating, drinking all day, every day. That's a pain in my fucking dick. Okay, but there's a ton of stuff. But, but I'm like, even right, when I have little gas. All it takes is once. I let it accumulate once so bad that like a lot of my dishes are in there, and then that's it. I'll never, I'll never recover. I'll never get back ahead of it. I'm just, it's just Sisyphus, it's just rolling the ball. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep those dishes in there forever. All it takes is one time where I load it up, and then I'm just gonna continually take out a cup, put it back in. There's one well, how, dirty what if, cup. What if you just use a cup to drink water? You don't even know if it's clean anymore. No, I mean, well, first of all, I might, if it's just a water cup, uh, you know, I'm not even too bothered by that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, but, you know, I, eventually I'll get back, I'll get my head above water and I'll unload everything. But for the most part, my my dishwasher is also just one giant cabinet. No, you, uh, I, I'm I'm not, look, I, by no stretch of the imagination am I like a put together person. Do I, under no stretch do Certainly I. Certainly not. Keep things tidy and stuff like that. But that's one, I'll empty the dishwasher every time. Because I, because I, guys, because by the time it's run, I probably have like eight glasses and like six plates in there. And then, like, that's So you want to just go, be I, able to, shink, to boom, take shink, it, boom. you want to put it into a cabinet. You just, you're just giving yourself extra work. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's it, I don't know. The, I guess that's something my mother beat into me. Yeah. And it's just like, you have to, like, that was... It feels very like making the bed to me where it's just like, I don't know, I'm just gonna, like, ruin it again, so... Yeah, but also making the bed, I don't do it, I don't participate in the practice, but it's undoubtedly comfier to come home to a yeah, bed. no doubt, but it's just, like, not comfy enough for me to uh, waste my time in the morning. No, but and it I is really, better. And I really don't like the people and the therapists who say, like, it, you put make your bed because you accomplished something that day. I don't buy that. I don't either. I don't think that's gonna change my life. You started your day doing something good. And doing like, something, check that. I box. understand, but like, make it a little bit harder, like a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, more, like I don't know, rewarding. That would be nice if there's something better. I mean, people would then posit to you work. I'm going to. I'm, gonna, um, I'm not going to do that. I would say start off your day masturbating. You accomplished something. You came. You came. I would, and that would make me a lot happier than a <laughs> fucking bed. Okay, I'll tell you that much. Next up. Hey, boys. Um, so I've been watching or rewatching New Girl, and there's just an episode where Nick burned just a CD or gave just a CD. I was called Nick Sexy Mix. And my question to you is what songs or artists would be on your sexy mix? Oh, man. I think mine would have, or, well, Nick had the Humpty Dance, and I think mine would probably have The Weekend, the Halsey. Oh, and then fuck, like something like pour some sugar on me or some shit. Halsey is for sure uh-huh. my answer. Adele rolling in the deep. Really? <laughs> rolling like Poseidon, <laughs> baby. Yeah. I'm going Halsey. You're going rolling in the deep. Matt, could you imagine that set? Like rolling in the deep. That's just fights. Just fucking. Yeah. You're like you know what you really got to do? <laughs> Don't ever request that again. Don't you ever. Ever, yeah, Kev. ever do that again? Hey. You know what's a little scary is I did make eye contact. I, I did kind of like follow your orders. I guess I'm the do- I'm the sub. Fuck. <laughs> look at, you know what you got to do is is look at me. You got to do this to pony. You got to mm-hmm. fucking. I don't. Here's a take. Don't care for it. I know, but I know you said that before. Have I? 
Yeah. I didn't know I said that before. Okay. I, I, literally, we have said everything before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I have nothing I'm done, left. I'm done, I'm done with all the words. I have <laughs> given all I have. I might make a new story, but as far as anything that's happened already, <laughs> I've been, said it all. It's been told. Could you imagine? I mean, we have told stories for 10 years. <laughs> that's it. If you have more than 10, 10 years worth of stories, you are the most interesting man in the world. No wonder we're scraping the bottom of the barrel talking about fucking... Uh, the, the dumbest shit. The last few weeks have just been like off the rails because I think we're out of gas. <laughs> you think this is the end of the show? Yeah. You're going to go Glenn? We you might not. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 yeah. We have Glenn Howerton on today talking about uh, like how he kind of reached what he thought was the end of the line with Sonny because he was like, I, I just don't have the same feeling anymore. And it's like, I just don't have anything to tell. I don't have anything to give you. You saw the stories? Yeah. I don't know, man. I think we got plenty of stories. No, you have, you have them. I mean, you pull them out of your subconscious, the ones that you've suppressed. <laughs> I feel like I've just told you everything. <laughs> so, you know what? Fuck you. Should we just get into it with, with Glenn? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Glenn Howerton on KFC Radio. This is a very, uh, it's a little, pretty long. We, we got some extra time with him. It's very interesting for like the very, the First big chunk of it is more interesting talk about acting and television and Sonny and his career. And then towards the end, uh, we start loosening up talking about boozing and teachers and like our lives as, as students and shit. It gets fun towards the end. So a perfect interview with our golden god, Glenn Howerton. Let's do it. There he is. What's up, pal? What's up, boys? How we doing? Pretty good, man. Yeah. Pretty good. Well, the, the- uh, late because of your other show. How how'd that go? I thought it went well. I don't know. All right, fuck them. Whatever. <laughs> it's all about this show. Don't worry about that. <laughs> we like to start the yeah, show by yeah. uh, uh, wishing you a happy anniversary. Eleven years. Eleven years, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, we, it was on Saturday, I think, our, our anniversary. Yeah, eleven years. Seems super excited about that. <laughs> 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 I love what you got going on here with this uh, this background. Looks very classy, very masculine, very sleek. I like it. It is extraordinarily masculine. Um, <laughs> it was the one. It was it, it was a space in our house because my wife and I built. Actually, we built this house, um, and we moved in about four years ago. But this was. I was like, I need one space to be just like just yours. Yeah, th- th- just like it looks the way uh, an extremely masculine candle. <laughs> is that a candle going behind you? Is that a flicker of a candle? I see. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. You classy <laughs> son of a bitch. I bet that smells like whiskey or something. <laughs> it's, like, it's kind of this like woodsy. It's like, you know, it's got some vanilla in there, so it's kind of sweet, but it also kind of smells like a like a campfire. It's fucking dope. <laughs> Yo, uh, so mm. I think this is going to end up being the best thing that ever happened to AP Bio, jumping onto the the streaming world, where I feel like you guys can kind of take the shackles off a little bit, really let it fly, and uh, and get down with like the streaming crowd, because it looks it certainly looks like this season's going to be uh, off the walls. Pretty funny. It's I'm so I, I'm honestly like I'm I know I know that like I'm 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 clearly I'm here to promote the show and and all that kind of stuff but I mean the, the truth is man I, I I'm watching the show and I am laughing my ass off mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I don't know if that's a, a a good sign or a bad sign but I, I I take it as a good sign because like I I think like I've definitely seen things that I'm in where I'm like oh no really. No. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that your like, is oh. that your own like insecurity, or do you think it's actually just like a bad project? Uh, I think s- most of the time, I think it's because it wasn't good. The really? Thing wasn't good. Okay. I, I, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, I've gotten pretty accustomed to looking at myself on camera. Uh, I've had so much practice. You know, you get when you spend a lot of time in the editing room editing yourself, Ugh, like nightmare. like I have on Sunny. Yeah. Uh, I just I kind of I. I've, I, I've been, I'm, I'm able to objectify myself. In other words, I, I'm able to watch the show and to some degree, not see me to actually see the character and to be able to kind of separate myself enough to, to watch something and go, I know that's really good or that's really bad. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I'm watching this new season of, I I mean, I, I love every season of AP bio. I really do. But this new season is, it's just, it's kind of next level. And the 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 show's creator Mike O'Brien is just you know I, I I really get the sense that he well we actually talked about it a little bit I think I think he was feeling a little like you know what uh, Peacock has given us a second chance here 
Uh, but I don't know if we'll ever get to do it again after this. This might be my last shot. So he, he really wanted to go down swinging if mm-hmm. he was going to go down at all or succeed. He was like, I'm either going to hit it out of the park or I'm going to go down swinging hard. And uh, I personally think he knocked it out of the park. And and I, I hope people are watching it because uh, it's I don't think there's anything else right now that's that's like it. Do you think you're a bit of like a rock for Mike in that situation? Because I, and maybe I'm just, I, I, I misremember it, but I feel like Sonny didn't really take off until season three ish. Like I, I was in high school or early college at the time. So like it was on by three or four years before I was like, Oh fuck, this is a show. And I heard people talking about it a lot. Are you kind of like, I've been down this road with like a great funny show that I know is great and funny. So don't worry. Let's keep plugging away. Let's keep taking our cuts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I t- totally, um, I think to some degree it takes a minute to, for the audience to settle into, you know, if you've really created kind of a, a vibe and a, and a, and a world that it feels kind of unique, uh, sometimes it takes a second to settle into that. And I, I think it takes people, uh, I mean, a lot of people watched Sonny and they were like, I don't really totally get this. Uh, and then they and then they, they had some friend who was super into it that forced them to get back into it. And then they're like and then suddenly it clicks and they're like, oh, I get it. OK, right. And it's suddenly really funny. And, and I, I remember it being that way for me when I was a kid watching Kids in the Hall, which is one of my favorite sketch shows of all time. I didn't get it. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I watched it. I was like, I just, this is so stupid. <laughs> it's so dumb. Um, but then it, it took like the, but it was like the third or fourth time at a friend who just insisted, like, we're going to watch it. We're going to watch it. And, and some, I don't even remember what sketch it was, but it finally clicked. I was like, Oh, it's supposed to be dumb. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's so dumb that it comes all the way full circle to being smart again. And, uh, and I think, I, I think that, that it's true that I think AP bio is, is a little that way, but I think it's also that, I, I just think the show's gotten better too. Mm-hmm. I just think it's gotten better at what it does. With Peacock, were you uh, were you able to like the subject matter? I mean, in the trailer alone, there's bricks of cocaine, and it seems like there's cursing, and like it, it looks like the envelope's being pushed. Is that because of Peacock? Is there like new rules because you're streaming, or would it have been that way no matter what? Uh, I, it would have been that way no matter what to a degree, uh, but there was this. Uh, you know, sort of, you know, Mike O'Brien was kind of making jokes about, uh, is making jokes on the show, kind of like, like he's got a, there's a scene where a character, one of the students like curses Mm -hmm. and gets away with it. And another one of the students is like, oh, are we, can we do that now? now? (laughs) You know, so it's kind of a wink to the fact that we can get away with a little bit more on Peacock. But, uh, but one of the things I really like is that Mike, you know, very consciously didn't really do anything that I think for the most part, with the exception of like a few curse words and, you know, a couple jokes here and there, uh, the show, it tonally could still have been this way. Stay true to itself. Yeah. 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 And even though, you know, it struggled a little bit on NBC. They they were the 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 studio and the network were always very supportive of the show. Mm-hmm. They they were always fans of the show, which was nice. That was, that's that was put that up there in the pantheon for me of of like Arrested Development and other shows where it was like, if you watched it and you saw it and you have a good sense of humor, it's like fuck, this should get better ratings. This should be more popular. And I and I think though that that's the beauty of like the streaming services now is like you're not at the mercy of those networks anymore. And that the people who do like it are probably the people who are on Peacock who are who are streaming and binging and watching. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think it, you know, being on Peacock is I think a little bit more freeing because I, I think as long as they see that they, yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing for for a streaming service or even like a smaller basic cable network is what they want to see is a core audience that stays. Mm -hmm. Um, It doesn't have to be big, but if they see the audience, they see that it has an audience and they see that that audience is sticking around and watching every, then they see it and they go, if they're smart, they see that and they go, okay, it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. Mm -hmm. As long as we're holding on to the people who do watch it, the more people watch it, the more people it retains, and then it grows and grows and grows. And that's what happened with Sonny. It was, right. it was, you know, it started very, very small, but those people were like rabid fans, and the cult just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, and eventually. when you do like thirty nine seasons of a show, like you're doing with Sonny, it's just going to keep on. It's like the, the Sonny's like the universe; it just keeps expanding. It just <laughs> it's going to go on forever. I hope at least. It just it just is. Yeah. <laughs> you had said that in you guys noticed in Hulu you had a bigger fan base. I think that makes perfect sense because this show is pretty eccentric and a little little off the wall and weird. And that's kind of 
the millennial generation, even Gen yeah. Z to an extent, where it's like you think of like NBC primetime. I forget what you guys Thursday nights. Um, uh. <laughs> what, whatever, whatever night it was, like you think of that as more of a middle America, more yeah. of Toledo who kind of wants the Big Bang Theory and they want the laugh track. But like our guys are, or my my crew, my friends, my the, the millennials I identify with, like the fucking weird shit, like yeah. the off the wall shit, like the yeah, like the totally. big bag of spaghetti and Katie Holmes day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, one hundred percent. I mean, uh, it was there, it, it makes perfect sense to me that the show did okay on NBC but did really, really well when they were putting the, when they were putting the episodes on Hulu to stream it on Hulu. Um, you know, so it, it became very clear, I think, to people very quickly that it was clearly a streaming show. Um, and honestly, the only reason it didn't, you know, cause there was talk for a while, it was like, okay, maybe we'll just, we'll just transition it from NBC to Peacock. But Peacock had made a decision, my understanding is that Peacock had made a decision not to do original programming um, or, or either original programming across the board or just original comedies. I can't remember what it was. And when that happened, it was like NBC was like, oh, we can't wait anymore. We got to open up this slot. We're announcing that we're canceling the show. Whereas Peacock, even though Peacock was already like, you know, kind of scoping it out and trying to mm. decide like, maybe we'll, maybe we'll do like one original comedy and we'll give it a shot because it saw that it had a big streaming audience. So it was like, we have this property, we've paid for it. We have this thing. And, and it has a streaming audience, we could take it and put it on Peacock. You know, so once they decided to make original programming, uh, we I think we were the first show they picked up. Or we, I know we were the first comedy they picked up. Um, That's the reason why. So that was, yeah, it was that that was very gratifying because it, it 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 I think it hopefully it proved to people that the show does have an audience. They just didn't want to watch it linear. They wanted to watch it on streaming. And it sounds like uh, if you keep wearing these gray sweatpants, that the audience is here for it, man. These. Uh, this video, this, the Glurst is apparently a very real thing, and you in a pair of gray sweatpants <laughs> seems to be a fucking hit, pal. Yeah, what's with the gray? Why, why is it? Why? What's with the gray? Is there something happening with those gray? I got yeah, I your dick pay. looks better. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's what it is. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you learned. You something. didn't know that. No. You don't spend enough time on the internet, yeah, my you're man. You're very late to the game, Glenn. <laughs> this is a problem. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. I don't spend a lot of time on the internet. Uh, I, I really don't. And this is uh, something you really do need to know because one, you can exploit it for good, but also you got to be knowing you can't be wearing like your gray sweatpants to like out with the kids. Or some shit you gotta keep it in check glenn that's right yeah no it is you know, because i've gotten very comfortable in sweatpants and i think in the wrong situation it would be extremely offensive um, <laughs> but i think in terms of like putting a television show on that millions and millions of people see i think that's the right place for yeah, it. yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely <laughs> uh you're gonna throw a sock on though just i don't know i, I guess it's work whatever you do it work and if that's god's gift then good for you i think i think uh i i, I think a, a a nice a nice wool uh, hiking sock would, wouldn't hurt. <laughs> I got just the pair for it. I got an orange pair. I know when to put those down my pants. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we just read an interesting article uh, talking about your experience with Sonny and how you, you feel like you kind of like recommitted and you're back fully into it. And there was a period of time where you were kind of growing to maybe resent it. Is that too strong of a word? Or was there really like a, you know, kind of a, you fell out of love with it for a period of time there? Yeah, well, it wasn't that I fell out of love with the show. Uh, yeah, it's it's a little weird. To say. I mean, it is. It's what I was resenting was not the show. It was that I. It was that I had. It was that I felt tethered to it in a way that was preventing me from exploring other things that I wanted to explore mm -hmm. um, as an actor, as a writer, as a producer. Uh, I'm just not one of those people. I, what I discovered is that I'm not one of those people that has just boundless and endless amounts of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, I can only dedicate so much brain power and energy and, you know, I can only dedicate so much uh, before I'm drained and I'm done. And, you know, I tried to do other things while doing Sunny at the same time. And it was just, I found it extremely exhausting. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of got to the point where it was like, well, now that means I can only do Sunny. And after so many years and kind of feeling like ah, I said everything I wanted to say on this show, I, I just felt tapped out mm -hmm. and it wasn't a good feeling. It was, it, you know, I, I was feeling that way in mostly in season 11 and then 
I did season 12 and I felt like I was like, I think this is going to be my last season. So I actually had a lot of fun with season 12 because I was like, again, I'm going to go, I'm going to go out swinging. I'm going to go out, try to go out on top here and I'm going to throw everything at this last list, last season of mine. And then, you know, but taking two, I, I took basically the last two years off of mm-hmm. the writer's room. Um, you know, I was doing rewrites with the guys for seasons 13 and 14, uh, but I wasn't there breaking stories and, and, and writing original scripts and stuff like that. So, but t- so taking those two years off has been extremely refreshing and, mm-hmm. and it's also honestly given me a chance to reappreciate the, the yeah. show, and, um, you know, re fall in love with, uh, the show and, you know, get a little time away from those fucking guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was that a discussion you had with them? Did you, was there like a hard conversation to have at one point? Like guys, it's just not, I'm not feeling it anymore. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a hard conversation because, um, we have, we're, I'm able to have those kinds of conversations with those guys. And so I think one of the reasons why the show has worked as long as it has, because we can have those conversations with each other. Right. Um, and they were incredibly supportive. Um, they didn't want me to go, uh, but they totally understood. And, you know, uh, and, and I said, uh, you know, the last thing I want to, I don't want to like ruin the show. Um, but if this ends the show, uh, then it ends it. I, I, wow. I can't, I can't, I can't keep forcing myself. I, 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 can't, I was like, I can't keep forcing myself to come in and, and, and work on something that, that I'm starting to get mad because it's getting in the way of me following other dreams. Um, you know, and they were like, we totally get it. Uh, we're going to keep going. We want to try doing a season without you. And, uh, you know, I was like, okay, you know, cool. And, you know, when they got to the end or near the end of writing season 13, which was my first season kind of away from the show, or actually I think, somewhere near halfway through the writing process, they were like, we're having a lot of trouble figuring out how to write every single story without you in it. Would you be willing to come back and just act in a few? And I was or at that point, I'd already had enough time away from the show where I was like, oh, act on the show. That's the easy, that's the fun part. Yeah, you can just show up and do that, right? That's like- I just show up and ask. I was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, 100%, yeah, totally. So that's why I ended up, you know, uh, acting in the six that I was in and, and, and I couldn't help myself. I, I kind of went in and did rewrites, uh, on, on just those episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I really had nothing to do with, uh, the four episodes that I'm not in, like as an actor, producer, or a writer. Honestly. Very Dennis Reynolds ask. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that, that must be nice to get that, that like reappreciation though. Cause yeah. you, you step away and you're like, ow, oh, you know what? I got it pretty fucking good. It's kind of like a relationship, you know, yeah. it's like you go on a break and you're like, wait a minute, babe, I do love you. Let's get back together. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you got to go through a trial separation, uh, <laughs> you know, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I think I, I look at it almost more as like, I've, I've always looked at our, our situation. I, we've always felt like more, more like a band to me mm-hmm. than a TV show, uh, because we write, because, you know, we're, we're in the studio or we're, you know, we're in the practice space and we're writing songs together and then we're playing them. And then we're, you know, and, and we spend a lot of time with each other, you know, and, and it's like, okay, we're going to put out another album. It's what it feels like every year. Mm-hmm. You know, and for me, I was just like, I got to go off and do a side project. You know what I mean? I got to do my solo album or I got to do, you know, or I, I just want to be part of a different band for a little while and just, just, you know, do that. And then, but it was always in my mind. I was like, I, I mean, if they're going to keep going, maybe I'll come back at some point. You know, I mean, I, I never closed the door completely. Because um, you guys did downplay it a lot. I remember our first interview was, I think, season one AP Bio. And it was, you had been in the news and you re- re- reiterated it with us. We're like, Sonny's not going anywhere. But it seems like you were like, if it's going to go, it's going to go. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, s- coy <laughs> motherfuckers. You <laughs> liars. You're all just liars in Hollywood. <laughs> um, I think I just didn't want to, I didn't want to be, com- I didn't want to commit myself, uh, you know, uh, in the press to, you know, I don't want to make promises that I couldn't keep. And, um, you know, I wanted to allow myself the opportunity to, to truly walk away. Um, if that's what I ultimately decided to do. Um, so it wasn't really my, it wasn't like my intention, you know, I did want to, but I also did want to honor, you know, that we wrote toward that at the end of season 12, I wanted to honor the stories that we wrote and say like, this is the, this is the story that we wrote and we're sticking to it. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to just bail on that. It, it, it felt like, even though, you know, we usually hit the reset button, this felt to me like it was something where I was like, no, we need to, 
we need to like explore this. Like mm-hmm. the guy left the bar. He said, I'm leaving. I want to go be a dad. And, uh, you there was know, definitely some I, finality I, to it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I thought just for, I, I thought just in my mind, I thought like, well, if they're going to keep going, then, um, you know, hopefully this will give them, give them something to write to, um, you know, that will maybe shake things up in a way that'll make it interesting to them as writers. It's like, you know, sort of like I was kind of pitching them on the idea that like, okay, now that, now that this guy's gone, what are we, you know, and doing episodes that are where you're trying to figure it out. It's like, like a okay, new well, challenge. Well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and so I, I thought that would be a good thing. Um, but, you know, I don't think it's, I think if any one of us, you know, were to, really leave the show I, I do think it would be tough to keep going because yeah that was the I'm argument sure. i made when when you first when there was you know there's some sort of stepping away where i was like sunny's a tough one because there are so many shows that have the lead and sunny has five leads yeah. there's like there everyone plays such a humongously important role it's it's tough to even lose one leg on that yeah stuff. but it's also all i think it's i think that cuts both ways because it's like i think that's why it could survive in the in the, in the way that it did because it wasn't you know, those guys can stand alone, but there is something about it's not going to be the same without everybody. Yeah, it just, you know, I, I think it might have been, I think in some ways it might have been particularly hard with my character because when there's, there's usually a straight man in the in any given episode or, or any given scene, there's the person who's sort of the voice of reason, right. you know, trying to rein everybody in. Yeah, you need that, um, God damn it, you idiots. Like, there's nobody to do that. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, it does, that does shift, you know, it's not always my character, but uh, over the course of the, you know, 12 years that we've done the show, I, I would say that more often than not, that responsibility had fallen on my shoulders. Um, so I, I think they found themselves also in a situation where they were like, who's going to be the straight man? Nobody wants to be the straight man. Nobody, nobody, nobody could be no, really. Nobody, yeah. So yeah. So I think that that presented a, a, a very specific challenge uh, to the group dynamic when my character went away. I mean, that would be my guess. I didn't I, I haven't talked to them specifically about that, but that would be the challenge for me if I were writing the show without my character in it is being like, who's going to play the straight man role right. most of the time? Who's going to be the the one who's irritated with everyone? Everyone's <laughs> idiotic. <laughs> now, with with like comedies, do you get into character for roles? Is it, or are you, like, obviously you do, but is it as serious as, like, a, a Daniel Day-Lewis? Like, do you identify with the plight of teachers now? Like, from AP Bio with Jack? Um, it's not, you know, for me to drop into character, it's a little bit more esoteric than that. Um, I do, I do drop into character, but it usually, especially with a TV show, uh, doesn't take a lot of time because I've spent enough time as that character that <sighs> something in the dialogue, something in the props, something, you know, I can usually just kind of flip the switch mm-hmm. and, and, and drop into that thing. It's interesting. I saw something on social media today, actually. It's, um, I was looking on my Twitter feed and uh, somebody did a side-by-side picture of me and Dennis. And they were like, I don't know what it is, but I have a really hard time believing that Glenn Howerton plays Dennis Reynolds because they look and feel like totally different people. Mm-hmm. It's the first time I've ever heard somebody articulate that. And I, and I actually kind of stopped and I actually thought about that for a second. And I was like, yeah, they're really like, I, I think down to like just subtle changes in the facial structure. Mm-hmm that actually happen when I drop into that character. Um, and it's the same thing I think with Jack, you know, a pompous person's resting face is very different than my resting face. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and I think, so I, I think just something as simple I, for me, it's whatever the character's motivation is not to get a too actory, but I mean, it's kind of basic actory shit, but like whatever the character's motivation is usually with the comedy, it's so extreme and so fucking insane and ridiculous that if I can if I can drop into really feeling that desire to achieve whatever that ridiculous goal is, that's really all it takes for me if, mm-hmm. to drop into character. Um, but there is a switch for sure from me to Jack um, or from me for, to Dennis. It's 
and it's really just about like okay now i gotta now i have to fight for this insane uh you know goal of my character and usually that's kind of all it takes do you have any uh school experience teacher like memories or anything that like you drew from for i mean i don't know if there's any teacher out there like quite like jack but uh was there anybody who stuck out like you're emulating or trying to mimic from from your actual school days not really. Probably for the best. Uh, that probably means your schooling experience was, was well, good. <laughs> your schooling experience was weird as hell. You bounced around all over yeah, the place, you were right? Everywhere, man. Yeah, I was. I was. I was all over the place. Uh, and I had, you know, my fair share of good teachers and bad teachers. Um, you know, but but I always, you know, it was always important to me from the beginning to to be able to understand what it is that that Jack actually brings to the equation that's positive, even though. You know, it's 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 on the surface. It's it, it, you know, I'm playing a character who's like no to everything, which is the exact opposite of uh, of kind of the way most things work uh, mm -hmm. uh, dramatically. You know, you kind of need a character to be like, yes, let's try that. Yes, let's do that. Instead, my character's like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this, and I'm not going to do this. <laughs> and you know, so it was important for me if I if I was going to come in with the sort of almost a, an anti intention as a character. That I had to know, you know, that what he was going to bring to the table, whether he knew it or not, was that he was inadvertently going to be teaching these kids some adult life lessons just by virtue of the fact that they were going to get a dose of reality that they'd never experienced mm. before. And and a little bit of like sort of like hardcore, brutal honesty from someone in a way that they they probably weren't used to from their parents or their teachers. So, you know, so in a way I was like they are learning something from him and it was, and it was good for me. And I needed to attach myself to that in order to, to kind of latch on to uh, the more positive side of the character. What's the worst thing that ever happened to you in school? <sighs> what is the worst thing that ever happened to me in school? Nobody's ever asked me that. Uh, what is the worst like thing one time I was in gym class doing the uh, the sit ups and I was, there's like three two one go and I farted in front of the whole <laughs> class that was very traumatic for me. Yeah, I, I you know it's funny. There, there, I feel like there's there, there are definitely people who are like high school kids who just rip farts and they think it's hilarious and they're cool with it. Mm, I was not that guy. Uh, I wasn't. Either, I was man. mortified. I was like, no <laughs> bodily function in front of people. Fuck. <laughs> Totally. I no. I I can relate to that. I I I did not become fully, kind of fully secure with myself and who I was until I was like thirty. Sadly, <laughs> I was. I'm thirty two. I'm not there Still yet. Still going. <laughs> Still going strong. Yeah. I, I had Mrs. I, Pillsbury make us clean out her mini fridge, which was just full of Twinkies, while she sat on her desk. This is probably third. <laughs> this sounds like a script. Between, Mrs. Pillsbury between, cleaning out her Twinkies. I forget exactly. It was between third and fifth grade, and she sat on her desk. Very unladylike, if oh, you know what I mean by God. this. In a skirt. She was a hefty lady. She looked every bit of Mrs. Pillsbury. Oh. And it was the first time I'd ever seen pubic hair. Oh. And it scars me to this day. It was Jesus. it was a jungle. It was <laughs> awful. It's the worst thing that's yeah. ever happened to me. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 uh, I, I, yeah, because you're like, don't, no, that's not what I want to picture. I don't want to, yeah. that's, you know. Nope. She just made us clean her fridge, Glenn. She like, she, we weren't it's doing, labor. Labor. it was worse than what Jack does. Like, he was like, what are you talking about? You want us to just clean your fridge in your, in your classroom. Why do you have a fridge in the classroom, by the way? It was awful. Yeah, right. <laughs> Talk about a hardcore dose of truth, man. <laughs> Shit. Uh, um, I want to think, I I wish I had more time to, to. I wish I had an answer for you because I. There's. Yeah, I mean, there, I'm sure there's like shitty things that happen. Well, listen. All right, what, what was your worst subject? Oh, uh, history, probably. I. I just didn't. I just didn't get it. I just didn't give a fuck about <laughs> history. Anytime. Anytime somebody started talking about what somebody did in some year, I was like, I don't fucking <laughs> care. I couldn't figure out how. <laughs> that related to my life now and yeah. what I needed in this moment. I was like, like, and then they say to me, like, like history I, repeats itself. It's like shut the fuck up, or, or I you don't won't, care. you won't learn. Like if you'll, you'll, you'll make the same mistakes in the history of the past. Like I didn't even think of enslaving people. Yeah. That thought never even crossed my mind. If you didn't bring it up, like what are you talking about? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I just, I, I don't know, man. And I, and I actually liked school. I, I really did. I mean, I, I loved math. I loved science. Did all you? That let me, let me ask you about math real quick because yeah. I, I, I don't want to take up too much more time. But we did a challenge here today. Forty. Third grade level multiplication questions in a minute. 
Uh, how many of those do you think you could get? Or, or, or if you could get them all, how fast do you think you would do it? I, I honestly don't know. I don't know. This guy think, got 22, and got then he 20, ran out of time. I got 23 every other time. For, I, to be clear, I wasn't told there was a time limit, so I was taking my time counting on my fingers. I didn't realize it was only a minute limit, and I got I got a failing, a very failing Like, rate. if I asked you right now, what's 9 times 7? Do you know the answer? 63. Yeah, okay. Oh, so you, you'd be good. That was a yeah. show-off so, move right yeah. there. <laughs> Mr. Fancy Pants over here. <laughs> I did. I was saying I did. I'm so bad at math that I got a perfect score on my SAT writing, and I still had really bad SAT scores. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, that sounds about right. I don't know if we have time for it, but I, I love I love shit like that. I I uh I yeah, I just I always just really like math to me was like a fun game. It was like a puzzle. It was like a puzzle with numbers. Like it was fun to me. Uh I, I understand why other people didn't like it. It was just uh, I, I I loved it. It's weird, man. I loved math and science and kind of hated history and literature. It See, was, that's crazy. I, I picture I had you pegged the exact yeah, yeah, total opposite. opposite. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the yeah, art most, type. Yeah, most artsy types are a little bit more into like history and literature, and I fucking hated that stuff. I couldn't, I could I just I'm also I think a, I, I mean I want to say I'm I also just don't, I, I like things, uh, I don't know, like, it's almost like history and li- like reading a book is just too much of a damn commitment. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, it's like golf. Like I can't, pl- I can't play golf. Like mm. I-, I fucking can't stand golf. I'm like, it's too, it's too fucking slow. <laughs> it's too fucking slow. I want to, I want to hit, I literally, this is what I would, if this is what I want to do. I want to hit the ball and sprint to my ball. And I don't want to wait for somebody behind me to hit the ball. I want to sprint to my ball. I want to hit it. I want to sprint to the ball again and hit it again. And I want it, and I, and I want it to be over in six holes. <laughs> you know who you need to golf with? Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. That's how Wahlberg golfs. He, he treats it like cardio. He hits it and he <laughs> sprints. And, and, and does, he wakes up at like 3 a.m. to do it. Yeah, I swear That's to God. legit how he I plays. Swear to God. <laughs> so there was like a like an Esquire piece on him or whatever like two years ago. And it was like. That's his life hack, the, the right? Per, the person showed up. The, the interviewer uh, showed up at the course being like, hey, we're, I'm here to interview Mark Wahlberg. They're like, he just started his round. And he's like, well, I'm, I'm not going to sit here for four hours. And they go, no, he only plays nine. He sprints the whole thing. He'll be back here in 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking great that's the way to do it man that's the way to fucking do it like i, I i'm all i'm all for that although i will say even nine is too much for me but again Six. it's kind of i like it that's that's the only way to make yourself that's that's the only way to get back to the clubhouse and you know drink your beer yeah so you, you gotta do the nine you know what i mean otherwise you're gonna you're, you're, gonna, you're, you're backtracking speak before I let you go speaking of drinking how's drinking going in quarantine i know you i know you like to post the tequila no. you posted you posted jill the other day with some wine and cake i think let's for breakfast go. <laughs> let's go <laughs> yeah you know it's weird I, I i think most people would think you know because of who i pl- have played on television that i'm a big uh i'm a big drinker um but i generally speaking i've, I've never been somebody to to drink at home uh sure. I, I was always a social dr- i'm a social drinker mm-hmm. um but i lo- but i've always liked drinking and i've always really liked drinking socially and when the social thing went away because it was like well we can't be social i was like well, but I still want to drink. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so then I'd be like, all right, I'm going to have, I'm going to make my, and this was like one night I was like, I'm going to start experimenting and making, you know, making cocktails at home. So, you know, that's how it started. I and think I that's like, what a lot yeah. of guys did. The women flocked to the sourdough bread. The guys bread, were like, yeah. I'm going to become a mixologist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that is kind of what happened. But really what it now has turned into is just me pour it, just me pouring like spindrift, you know, and tequila in a glass and drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, man. All right. Uh, really thank you for the time. Uh, you know what? We're, I'm going to, one way or another, I'm going to send you this multiplication test. I want to see what you would get. Either you're a publicist, I'll email it or we'll tweet it at you or whatever. I want to see what your score would be. I love that, actually. I, I, I will absolutely do that. Um, maybe my wife and I will do a little competition. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> we'll love it. Thank you so much. AP Bio's out now. You can catch it on uh, Peacock. Please go stream it because it's so fucking funny. We look forward to uh, the return of Sunny. And thanks always for the time, man. Yeah, man. It's great seeing you guys, as always. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. You too, buddy. Enjoy the tequila tonight. Bye.